Welcome to Pratt Live, a virtual telethon. There are a few people here in the live studio where we are all wearing um, these very fun masks here at Pratt. We are really working hard to be very safe. Now is a great time to refill your glass. If it's a wine glass or a cocktail glass or a kombucha glass or a coffee cup, whatever it is, please um, refill it. And then we would love if you would send us selfies of yourself and whoever you might be with right now, um, take a picture and before 7.30 this evening, send that picture to prattlive at pratt.org. We really wanna see all of you who are with us tonight our program is gonna begin very soon at six o'clock. We will see you then. And in the meantime, if you have that macrame that came in your Pratt Life party kit and you haven't started on it yet, um, I encourage you to do so. Uh, I worked on it and created this crazy bow tie that is kind of a macrame something. Um, but be sure to check out this video of Steve Galatro showing us how to tie macrame knots. One of Steve's creative resilience projects this last year was to polish up his macrame skills, and you, are, you will see they're amazing. Check out this video.
Welcome to Pratt Live, a virtual telethon. We are so happy to have you here. My name is Ian Lindsay, and I am wearing a macrame bow tie and standing in an art studio with a cement floor and a large kiln door behind me, some very interesting machinery nearby. And this room probably looks familiar to some of you. If you know where I am, I invite you to put your guests uh, thank you so much, Uncle Carl Lagerfeld, uh, in the chat. Um, we have also provided captions for tonight's show. And if you click the link in the chat or in the description below this video, you will open the closed captioning. You'll be able to put those wherever are mo most convenient. And Etsko, hello, so nice to see you. And Cole, so nice. Uh, Cole, you are so close. You are so close, just adjacent to the glass blowing studio. If you want to guess one more time where we are, you you will be you will be you'll be right. Uh, glass studio. Okay, yeah, McIntyre Furniture. So it's very close to the glass studio. It's actually the fabrication studio. Okay, we are at Pratt Fine Arts. You're all right about that, where the metal sculptors work here in Seattle Central District. And this will be our home base for Pratt Live. I know, and Terry, oh, Terry Hiroshima, kiss kiss to you too. So nice to see you in the chat. I know you're sending it to Etsuko, uh, Etsuko not me, but that's fine. Um, next, we have the great pleasure of welcoming one of our board members. She has been on the board for the past two years and is a member of a blacksmithing collective. Would you please welcome Deanne Hartono? Welcome, Deanne. Hello, my name is Deanne Hartono and I'm a Pratt board member. On behalf of the board, welcome. Before we begin our night, uh, we want to acknowledge uh, the land in which Pratt stands on. In particular, we want to acknowledge um, and support past, present, and future indigenous communities. With that in mind, let's begin with a land acknowledgement. Pratt Fine Arts Center is founded on stolen land. Pratt uh, Fine Arts Center's land was originally for the Coastal Salish people in whom the du uh, Duwamish people are a part of and who we believe are those original stewards of the land. With this information, we want to acknowledge that we have a responsibility to understand the importance of the land as well as uh, destroy indigenous oppression and colonization, as well as honor the cu cultural heritage in which our indigenous community members are part of. Chief Siad and uh, native leaders reluctantly signed the Treaty of Point Elliot on January 22nd, 1855, in which they were promised services, fishing and hunting rights, as well as uh, reservations in exchange for 54,000 acres of the Duwamish people's land. To this day, the United States government has not honored this treaty. So I invite you tonight to go to the chat and look for links for actual items. We understand this is not a replacement of the current work that Pratt is doing uh, in order to continuously build a collaborative community as well as um, build and shape the authentic relationship that we have today. Thank you so much for allowing me to take this opportunity to acknowledge the land, and I, what, I wish you a wonderful night. Thank you, Deanne, so much um, for all of your leadership, and thank you. And to all of you, Pratt Live is back by popular demand because last year's event was so much fun, we're doing it again, this virtual telethon. And of course, we have a live auction again this year with some really incredible um, pieces of art from amazing artists. And the live auction will close at about eight o'clock. I say about because it's a live auction. It'll close when people are bidding and, and it'll be really fun. Um, you can bid in our auction software, Max 
giving. And the link is in the chat right now, ever so conveniently, and also in the description right below this video. So please make sure that you are logged into Max Giving. Um, and it is also the place that you will be able to make a contribution tonight towards keeping Pratt going because this is a fundraiser. It's a virtual telethon and we are accepting donations. Um, in, in fact, you are encouraged to donate as often as you like. You can do donate once or twice or 10 times or even more if that feels right. Um, and we are so, so um, welcome. Uh, we so welcome all of those gifts. Also, because this is a community event, we really would love to see you, whoever you are with tonight, wherever you are, would you please take a selfie or two and send them before 7.30 to prattlive at prat.org. We would love to see all of us all together. We're gonna put those selfies into our show. We're gonna get to see who's here with us tonight. And I can see that Ryan and Molly and Monica and um, Cynthia and Olivia, so many people are here with us right in the chat. Um, and we're so, so grateful. If you need any support this evening during this virtual telethon Pratt Live extravaganza, we have team members standing by ready to assist you. Natalie and Eve and Julie and Ryan, they are uh, waiting. Uh, if you need to call them, you can at 206-328-2200. Um, they can help you with max giving if you're trying to purchase an auction item or with making a donation. Also, if you need specific help, you can email Natalie at nmiller at pratt.org and she can get back to you and assist you with any of those things, including with YouTube Live, if um, that would be uh, helpful. Hi, hi, Molly, Tom, Have nice to see you too. And Terry, yes, I can see you're all talking to each other. It's wonderful. Um, speaking of the chat, uh, we really want you there because obviously that is where the party is. Um, Deanne is there and Molly and Ryan and Cheryl and, and Molly. Hi, Molly. Um, the, uh, so please come and join us in the chat. It is a fun place to be. And we would, we would, we'd like to ask you right now in the chat, this past year of quarantine has been many, many difficult things, but it has also been a time when many have found new creative outlets, art projects and cooking and gardening. And we're wondering, what was your creative quarantine endeavor? Would you, using only emojis, this is the challenge, this is the Art Pratt uh, challenge, use emojis to show us your quarantine creativity Show us right now, like what, what did you do creatively during, during quarantine? We'd love to know. Um, and also, I wanted to take a moment as you are, I can see that suddenly the chat got a little slower because you're all trying to be super creative with your, with your emojis right now. I totally understand what's happening. We, we welcome it. Um, uh, I wanted to just show you some of the other people um, that we have here in, and, and things that we have in the fabrication studio. So um, I'm gonna just head over this way. So please come with me, yes. And uh, you're gonna see that we have amazing live auction items. Really, really cool live auction items um, over here. These are um, a number of our live auction items. And over here on the other side of me, these are a number of our really beautiful live auction items. Oh, and I have to just show you, I mean, in here, this is actually um, item number two, and it's got all this beautiful, beautiful work, but I'm gonna close it so that you can see item number five, because, wow, it's totally incredible. So make sure that you are logged in to Max Giving, because that is where our live auction is gonna be happening. And um, while you are doing that, uh, what am I gonna do next? I see there's, so oh right, so thank you. People are helping me. This is a community endeavor. Um, the live auction is gonna happen a little bit differently than when we all gathered in the same room. But if you were part of Pratt Live last year, it will probably feel familiar. The items are gonna close in groups. So items one through six, which are these items, will be in our first group of live auction items. And items seven through 12 will be in our second group of live auction items, which you can see over here. And then items 13, 14, 15, and 16 are particularly special. They will be in our third group of live auction items. And they're special because 
there are artists here at Pratt creating art right now. And those artists have donated those items that are gonna be in that third group of live auction items, some of which, most of which are not yet complete. So uh, we, don't, we can't show you what they are yet, but we will soon, but you can bid on them. So if you know one of those artists and you're like, it doesn't really matter exactly what it looks like because I would collect that artist regardless, you are welcome to make a bid right now, even before you get to see the finished product. But I can tell you, these are some awesome artists. So, um, so um, I am going to go over here because speaking of artists, we are so fortunate that we have one of our artists right here in the fabrication studio. So come back this way with me and uh, come back over this way. And hi. Um, Shruti Gatak, we are so, so grateful to have you. Welcome to the Fabrication Studio. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Great, and you are working, you're gonna be working on a piece throughout uh, Pratt Live tonight, yes? That's correct. And do you mind, I, you know, I think the camera can see, I can't quite see, but I'll just peek around. Do you mind just telling us a little bit like what, what it is you're working on? Yeah, I'm working on a still life. I have a setup there, which I'm looking at, so it's a, totally an observational painting. Um, it's just a two and a half hour session, so I wouldn't be able to finish it tonight. Uh, but I uh, did a head start before the event and then continuing through that, so. That makes, yeah. well, of course, like two and a half hours, not enough time for a full still life, but we are so grateful that, you, that you've brought your observational style of, of painting and that you're willing to do it with us here in the studio tonight. Um, that's so generous of you. And if you don't mind, um, we're gonna keep checking in with you a few course, times yeah. just to sort of see how it's going, if that's sure. wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here, Shruti. We, we welcome you. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and now, I have the privilege of introducing another person, our co-host for this evening, the person who will be uh, just over here, socially distant from me throughout the rest of our um, evening. And it is my great pleasure, and I hope you will put your virtual hands together for the relatively new and yet seemingly um, here forever, new uh, development director at Pratt, the one and only Mike Yoon. Mike, welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Ian, thank you, and thank you for being here, uh, watching at home. As Ian said, my name is Mike Yoon. I am the director of development at Pratt. It's my pleasure to be here. I have short black hair. I'm wearing an ascot and a sweater pin. And I'm, I'm in the 70s theme of tonight's show. I'm dressed in my finest yacht rock attire. Yes. I hope you all are enjoying it at home. <laughs> and you know what? I've, I've been on the job just for seven weeks here, uh, but I've really enjoyed getting to know the heart and soul of Pratt. And with that said, uh, part of that heart and soul uh, needs no introduction. The next guest that I get to introduce is none other than Pratt's executive director, Steve Galatro. Steve. Hey, everybody. I I'm Steve Galatro. I am sporting the head to toe 70s denim with a faux leather blazer overlay this evening. Uh, and feeling spiffy. I'm really excited to be back with you for the second edition of Pratt Live. This year, we are coming to you at a really hopeful time. People are getting vaccinated, businesses are beginning to reopen, and Pratt is gonna be right there with you. That's right, Pratt is going to be fulfilling all your creative needs as part of our community-wide recovery. It's gonna be a heavy lift to get Pratt open it and begin to rebuild. Your support tonight will provide the fuel that we need every step of the way. I got a lot more to tell you about Pratt's reopening, but it will have to wait because this is a live show and I've got places to be. The artistic process waits for no one. Can't stop, won't stop. The hot shop is all fired up for the first time in over a year, and we've got an amazing glass blowing demonstration from Dan Friday. And if I don't hustle on down there soon with the camera crew, we're going to miss the beginning. So I'm going to give up my spot here to someone you all know from last time, someone you all love, back by popular demand, the one, the only, Miss Hillary Lee. I love clapping for myself. Hi. Oh, my God. It's such an honor to be back. 
back here. Hi, everyone. I'm Hillary Lee. My hair is black, shoulder length, and curled down with a sparkling sequin dress. And I'm wearing a sparkling blue bow in my hair parted to the left side. Um, call me if you want more details. Um, I just love being here. I'm going to be the studio correspondent again. I'm going to like talk to artists. I'm going to jazz it up for you guys. But again, this place is amazing. I'm really excited to work with Leslie Nan Moon in the print studio. I'm going to talk to some cool ass, cool teens, <laughs> Lucia and Phoenix working in the um, youth room. And then I'm going to be also with Michael McCarty, um, who is an amazing woodcarver and artist in the wood studio. So without further ado, I've got to walk across the street and I got to go do my thing. So I'll see you guys soon. Awesome. Um, so I'm going to, oh, wait. Uh, yeah, you go. Okay, so wait, Hillary, that's good. Um, thank you. No, no, you can go. Uh, we appreciate I know you thought, no, no, please okay, go. See you soon. Okay. okay, see you soon. Great. Um, and I think that Steve, I mean, has made it down to the glass blowing studio um, to go and be with Dan Friday and his team because, you know, it's just right down there. Uh, so, hey, Steve, Steve, <laughs> would you tell us what's happening down in glass blowing? Hey Ian, hey everybody at home. I'm finally back we'll in Pratt's like Hot Shop. First time in over a year that we fired up the furnaces and I couldn't be more excited. And I am here today with the one and the only Dan Friday. How's it going, Dan? It's good, Steve. How good you been? Uh, I'm great, man. I'm, I'm excited to be here. And when I heard Pratt was uh, having their auction, I'm like, hell yes, I'll be right there. All right. Well, you're the first one christening it in over a year. How does it feel? That, that feels great, dude. I, when I was a little kid, I used to look in the window right here and watch uh, Lino blow glass. And at 11 years old, I thought maybe one day, and here we are again. Here we so are. It, I'm grateful that uh, grateful you guys are getting on the way open. Yeah, we're very excited. And we're so grateful to have you here. What are we making today? We're gonna make a salmon. Uh, I've got the team. We're gonna get this bubble started here. This will be the body of the fish. Uh, they're gonna pick up a solid head. We're gonna get the pieces ripping hot, stick them together, bang it out, blow it up, and uh, hopefully we get a fish in the boat. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel confident that we're gonna get a fish in the boat today. Yeah. I'm not worried at all. I'm gonna well, knock that... on wood because we never count our chickens, but you know. Hey, <laughs> are you working with color? Are you working with color today? Uh, yes, we're just about to stuff a cup. That's where I'm gonna take a gather on this bubble and uh, drop it into this kiln over here where I have a glass cup with the color and the cane set up, and it's gonna be like the skin of the salmon. All right, so scaly, like a scaly texture? No, it's more just a cane pattern, but yes, it, it'll be the surface. That's where the color will come from. Okay, So I'm awesome. gonna get a dip, and then I'll meet you over there. All right, sounds good. We're gonna go over here. Fucking improv, baby. Coming in here. can start gathering up that head. Yeah, so what we're doing now is just getting the bubble ready to go into the cup. And I'll put a nice taper on it so that it falls off the pipe nice and evenly. Jack's getting it hot. Drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. That's good, let's check that out.
So Dan, for the folks at home, how hot is that glass right now? This glass is ripping hot. <laughs> or in uh, numerical terms, probably about 2300 degrees. 2200 degrees, we're working it when it's really liquid hot. It comes out at about 2100, 2150, I think, Patrick, right? And uh, when we get it really hot, it'll probably be close to that again when we drip it into this cup. Right, okay. Wow. Yeah, so we kind of work in a range from about 1500 to about 2000 degrees. Let's put one last little shape on it before I turn it over to gravity. Capture this. Yeah, there's a, you might, I'll meet you over there at that box, Michael. That's where the cool footage will Over here, where Jack is. So maybe go stand by Jack. Oh, wow. That is hot. Yeah, this is good right here. No, just keep it warm for center, yeah. And so, yeah, Steve, when I said skin, I really just meant the color, and that little cup is just a small veil of color that will go on the surface of the salmon. So yeah, I can see that. Splits off the tip there. part, this is the body, and like I said, Sayuri will be getting the head started over here. All right, well, this is absolutely incredible. We're going to check back in with y'all in a little bit. For now, I'm going to send it back to you, Ian. This is so exciting. I can't believe you're in the wrong studio right now. you got to get over you. here. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks, Steve. We really appreciate it. And Dan, I just want you to know, like, you're making amazing art, but um, Hal's actually wondering if he can also have your last name, because your last name is really cool. I mean, Dan Friday, um, really amazing. And, and Mike, can you believe, like, to, we're, we've got art happening, and we're all here. Isn't it so great? It's just incredible. And, you know, for you at home, this might be your first time seeing someone live working at Pratt uh, in over a year, and that is so exciting. And think about that live studio access and how critical of a role it plays for artists of all different levels, all skill levels, including Dan Friday, and I just cannot wait to see what's gonna come out of that, of that kill next. That's so amazing. And if you believe in the power of the live studio access, and if you're excited to see someone back in the hot shop making something new, making new art now, is the perfect time to give and donate. Ian, there are so many great ways for people to, to give tonight. Uh, you talk us through some of them. Yeah, I want to remind people about our giving software, Max Giving. It's well named because you can give to the max right there in the software. It is also where you can bid on any of our live auction items. So please make sure you're registered and, and consider making a donation. If you would like to do it via telephone, because this is a virtual telethon, we also have people ready to answer the phone. You can call 206-328-2200, and we would be so grateful if you would reach out to us in any of those ways. 
And Mike, I think Hillary has actually made it across the street now to the Wood Studio. So let's go see in, uh, what's happening in the Wood Studio. We're really excited. What's going on? Yeah, wait. Wow, hey, Micah. Oh, How's hey, it going? how are you? Hey, everybody, I made it to the Wood Studio. Yeah. And I'm here with Micah McCarty. Woodcarver artist extraordinaire. I'm super excited to be here. Um, this looks already so amazing and we just got started. Um, Micah, how you doing? I'm doing good. Awesome, how are well you? thanks so much for being here. I'm great, I love being here. And yeah. um, before we get started talking about your artwork, can we tell the audience a little bit about yourself and who you are yeah. and your involvement with Pratt? We'd love to know more about you. My name is Micah McCarty and I'm a Macaw artist. Um, I've been working with Pratt for over a year now and it's really awesome community to be connected to. I love the vibrations of the people and the the, the just the community spirit of helping each other. Yeah. And the and the and really the, what really got me I think was the respect I got from the students too about the understanding there's important teachings behind what we're doing here mm -hmm. and so the respect of a cultural art form i think is great i, I i'm happy to share it um i mean this paddle right now i'm working on it it represents literally hundreds of hundreds of years of growth old growth cedars really iconic to northwest that's, people. that's amazing yeah let's talk a little bit more about what you're making today yeah so i'm i'm, I'm making a, a paddle this is basically a paddle for transportation some paddles for hunting would have a longer tip and the tip would never come out of the water. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different purposes and uses for paddles, but I like this one in particular for the shape for designing on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we've been making them for so many thousands of years. I mean, literally this is something that one of my ancestors would recognize, you know, when they see it. That's amazing. Is it um, functional as well as decorative? I mean, is this there a difference? This one could be functional, but if you really want to travel a big distance, you need a different kind of wood. You got to mm -hmm. use U wood was what we usually used, um, but sometimes you know maple or other kind of hardwood. But U wood was really the preferred okay. choice back in the day. So is this one going to be a little bit more or, decorative? Yeah, decorative. So gifting mm -hmm. people paddles with symbolic gifts, like mm -hmm. for canoe journeys. If I went to a, a big host tribe for a big gathering, mm -hmm. I'd bring a canoe and give it to them and say, thank you for inviting us here. I'm honoring your invitation. And I, give I them love a, that. Get, yeah, so paddles, you know, ceremonial, mm -hmm. um, don't have to be functional to be ceremonial. And then a lot of times for like for a wedding or something, um, when there's a special agreement or if there's a special uh, arrangement between two different peoples, mm -hmm. you tie the paddles together and that's a gift. Oh my that, God, that's so that's poetic. A, yeah, I love it's a, that. It's a commemorative sim symbology of, 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 a, of an agreement over friendship. That is so, so cool. Paddles are still very active in our culture. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, to have other people understand that to me is just, it's, it's also a gift for, you know, the beauty of the Northwest. I love that. Let's talk a little bit more about like who taught you how to carve wood and your history with, you know, yeah, my first in the carving, carving community. Yeah. Yeah, my first wood carving teacher was Tommy Dunstan at Wahilu Indian School down on Frank's Landing. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of an interesting educational experience for me because for one, it was the first time I actually really got to smell what it was all about. Yeah, you guys need smell-o-vision over and, here. It smells uh, amazing. Smell-o-vision, yeah. <laughs> but then um, my actual first teacher was the one that walked me through making one of these. You made that? I made this years later, but oh. my first carving project was one just like this. That's beautiful. And what do you, know? you know, it comes with paddles. So you've been carving your whole life. Yeah, so for better, yeah, so third grade was my first canoe. Of course, back then my canoe was different, it wasn't as refined <laughs> right. as that one. Still impressive that but, you did yeah, it in but third that's, grade. <laughs> that's what I started, that's how I started, was my, was my first canoe at awesome. Wahoo Indian School, and then ever since I just kept doing art. That's brilliant. I love yeah. that story. Cool. And so you're making this paddle here. And how long does it usually take you to carve out a paddle and then paint it? Well, one of the good things about these paddles is they're, they can be done fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. like they don't take a lot of time. So even a beginner would have an easy time having a completed project within a short amount of time as opposed to something like this. Mm -hmm. So paddles give beginner carvers, and even for myself, it's something that I can do to paint. For me, having something like this finished relatively soon, mm -hmm. 
I could get into some design work and spend more time into details for something really ornamental, mm -hmm. you know, for maybe a special gift Ooh, or something like well, that. I'm excited that you're even sharing this process with us. I'm so excited to see what you come up with this evening. I know that's not going to be like completely finished, but I just love just even seeing the process. Oh, so right. um, I'll just be checking in with you in a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. This is so exciting. Yeah. So yeah, so we're going to go back to you, Ian. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Micah. And, you know, um, Mike, it's, it, I can't smell the cedar from across the street, but, but I almost feel like I can. And, and here at Pratt, I mean, being in this fabrication studio, it does have this very just unique and, and kind of wonderful smell. And, and I'm curious, um, for you at home, is there a smell that really brings you to Pratt? Like what takes you right to Pratt? Is it maybe the, the smell of the solder or, or the, the pickle in the jewelry shop? Or, or is there a sound maybe that brings you to Pratt? Like, like the ringing of the blacksmith's hammer or, or maybe it's the laughter because, you know, the glass blowers are saying things that are slightly... Um, PG-13, maybe. Um, I don't know if there's, if there's a sound or a smell, but if you would share in the chat any smells or sounds that bring you to Pratt, we would love to know, like, what is it? Um, and Mike, I don't know if you already have, like, a favorite thing about Pratt, or, or I mean, do, do you have one of those? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll, t I'll tell you, just, just standing here and uh, listening to Sruti just feet away uh, with the brush strokes, it sounds amazing. It's just amazing to to hear, see, feel art being made. And, and we're making art here at, in, in the studio too. We've got, we've got a whole bunch of people having a good time, clicking around, laughing. We're having a great time here. I hope you're having a great time too at home. And all of this is part of our Pratt community. Thank you for watching tonight. Thank you for being a part of the Pratt community in so many ways. You are what makes the Pratt community what it is. And I really appreciate it. We really appreciate it. We're so happy to have uh, everyone here. And Ian. Well, and you can see, Mike, that there are people who very much know what it's like to be here. Like Ryan is saying he loves that smell when the wood is burning a little bit in the glass studio as the artists are pulling cane. I mean, what an incredible smell that really you're only going to find at a place like Pratt. Um, and and um, Cole says the anvil's ringing in the blacksmith studio, um, popping and cracking of ring welders in the fab shop. I mean, again, like where else are you going to have all those sounds and smells and things happening in one place? Like not a lot of places. Yeah, just Pratt. And, and you know what? The, the whole Pratt community has so many people to thank. Uh, thank you for participating in the chat. We also want to say thank you to a, a, a very important group, a special group. One of the reasons Pratt is ready for success as we enter the next phase is the dedication and work of that very special group here at Pratt, our board members. Yeah. Board members! Right, give it up. You can see their names on the screen right here. Thanks, thanks to your service, your guidance, your leadership, your expertise. Thank you for making it possible for us to be here. Let's hear one more round of applause for those board members. Yes, board members give it up the for the board at home, yeah, woo! We also need to give some love to our staff, without whom, Woo! yes, that's right. Staff, Pratt staff. Let's hear it for the staff. There are some of our fine, my fine colleagues, people I am honored to call colleagues, people I am honored to be with. <laughs> we want to send you love. You make our programming possible, our virtual program. You make this event possible. Your support is so, so appreciated. Let's give them one more round of applause again. To the staff! All these talented people. We love you! Yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And. And we also have to say thanks to one final group, uh, especially for Pratt Live tonight, but for your support throughout the year. Uh, that is our Pratt Live sponsors. Let's give some gratitude to our Pratt Live sponsors tonight, including the Chlorfine Foundation. Uh, we also have uh, Nintendo to thank, Columbia Bank, Perkins Coie, Robert Edson Swain Architecture and Design, and Glass Eye Studio, and Pot Pie Factory. Thank you to our sponsors for tonight. <laughs> Thank you! And I want to give a very special thanks to the Chlorfine Foundation. Chlorfine Foundation, thank you. They have gifted us uh, with a very generous donation. Yes. They are launching tonight with a $50,000 gift. Thank you, Chlorfine Foundation. Can we hear it for the Chlorfine Foundation? Woo! 
thank you, Chlorophynes. Thanks to all, this gift and all the other pre-committed gifts that have given us a rock solid foundation on which to build tonight. It is going to be an incredible night, Ian. Definitely an amazing night. Um, and of course, the most important group really is all of you who are here with us um, and, and remembering what it's like to be here in Pratt. And I mean, you know, Mike and I, we feel so fortunate along with everyone else uh, to be here. And we can't, you know, we, and I can see that people are, are, are longing to be here. And we, we long for that too, as, as all of us are going to be finding our way back. Um, and I know that some of you ordered a Pratt Live Party kit. And, or maybe you have a dinner from the Pot Pie Factory, and we hope you are so enjoying um, all of those things. And I do want to remind you that we want to see you as well. So please consider taking a selfie um, and do it of yourself or whoever you're with. And then, you know, send it before 7.30 to uh, prattlive at pratt.org. And we're going to be able to have some of those. And actually, Mike, um, I, I have a yeah. thought. And yeah. Shruti, can I interrupt the painting for a moment? Do you mind? Because I was thinking, um, could we maybe take a selfie, the three of us? And here, we'll just yeah. do it. We'll do it. Okay, like this. Yes. Okay, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Okay, good. We're maintaining. And okay, this is for our Pratt Live virtual telethon right here. Yes, I'm going to take two because this is such a great shot. Oh, my gosh. Thank you both so very, very much. Um, and okay, so if you would do that with whomever you are with right now, and then all you have to do is send it to Pratt Live at uh, pratt.org, do it before 7.30, because we want to see, oh, and I can see there's, that's Steve's selfie from last year. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, Steve, take a new one, because we want to see it. Um, and now, uh, we're so excited, because Hillary is going to in introduce us to another wonderful artist. And I believe she's made it over to the printmaking studio. So let's go and see what's going on in the printmaking studio. Um, I can't wait. Studio. Guys, did. I made it to the print studio. This is very exciting. I do um, want you to be careful around the ink. Thank you. you look beautiful. Noted. Thank you. I'm wearing black, but that was so sweet of you. So, um, anyways. I'm here with Leslie Nan Moon, printmaker extraordinaire, and I absolutely adore her work. I worked with her for many years in the past, and I actually know her through Pratt, because, you know, Pratt's amazing. So for those of you who don't know Miss Leslie, please tell us a little bit about yourself, your history here at Pratt, and what you do, and all the wonderful things that you do for the Pratt community. Happy to. So um, I have been a printmaker since forever. I actually have my BFA in printmaking and book arts that I got back in Philadelphia. Then I moved out here uh, 20 odd years ago. One of the first things I did really was get to know the art community and that's how I got established with Pratt. Uh, so many great friends, opportunities, nice. classes. I've actually taken jewelry over there too. Fun! So, um, so yes, yeah, so many different mediums, have a great time at Pratt. And then a few years ago, um, even though I had been involved with Pratt, selling my art in holiday sales and taking workshops, I started to become a teacher here. That's so I've been so teaching cool. here now for several years. Absolutely love it. Yeah. It's what great. kinds of things do you teach here? Primarily, I am the block printing teacher. Oh, so cool. um, block printing can fall under a couple different categories of linoleum blocks or wood blocks. We also can use this stuff called like easy cut. I won't get into it unless you take my mm. class. And it's, and, and it's for like introductory classes? Like if yes. I don't know how to block print, you'll like explain to me what that means? Yeah, absolutely. Oh. So I teach an intro class here. So if anybody wants to learn the basics of block printing, I do teach the uh, intro to block printing. But also um, we're going to start offering intermediate classes. Oh, how fun. And actually the intermediate class is going to teach the process that I'm doing today. Oh my God, so cool. So what are we doing today? I'm seeing all these great tools, all these great drawings. I wanna to touch everything, but I won't. So tell me, what are we doing today and all the cool tools that are around you? So I'm gonna do a jigsaw puzzle lino cut today. Awesome. And basically what that is, is I'm gonna take what would normally be a traditional linoleum cut, where I do a drawing, transfer the drawing onto a block. I use my cutting tools, I carve out my image, and instead of just going right to printing it, for what I'm going to do today, um, I did a little example so you can see is after I carved it, I cut it apart 
Ooh. like it was a puzzle. Can we show the audience sure. your samples and then I'll show you the example print? So, so it's those two printed on this. Yeah, so what I do is so cool. cut it apart. I inked up the bottom portion in black, the top in what's called a rainbow roll because it's more than one color. Then put it back together. Then I get to move it over onto one of the fabulous presses that they have here. So at cool. Uh, lay the paper down, you run it through the press. There you go. And voila. So tonight I'm gonna start from scratch. I did the drawing earlier. It's transferred onto the block. Now I'm gonna carve it mm -hmm. while you guys are having fun over at the auction. Well, cool. And, uh, yeah, and then we'll keep going with this one. What is this imagery of? Oh, so I tried to do just something traditional Northwest. Um, so it's sort of Mount Rainier, but don't, you know. I get that. Don't hold it up next to a photograph. <laughs> well, it looks really cool already. I'm so excited to see what you come up with. Thank you. I'm really, really excited to kind of check in with you later and see the progress that we're making, okay? Excellent, sounds good. Awesome, well, um, back to you, Ian. Can you believe, Mike? Oh my gosh, wasn't that incredible? So many, so many things are happening right now tonight. It's amazing. We're, we're getting so many balls rolling already. We have artists all over the place and all over the place because we have such a diversity of disciplines here that we celebrate at Pratt. I wonder if you know how many we have. Think about it for just a moment. 14 different studios. Wow. And at Pratt, we celebrate education from beginners to masters, and that is part of what we do at Pratt, and if you believe in that diversity of disciplines, now, tonight, is the perfect time to give. And we have a wonderful gift from Chris and Alita Latham that we have to thank, $10,000. Thank you so much, Chris and Alita Latham. Oh my gosh, thank you, For that you, generous thank you. gift. Yes. And uh, Ian, plenty of ways to, for people to give still. Yes, definitely, and, and we are so grateful for people who are, and you can reach out through our auction and giving software. Make sure, the, the link is right, before the, right below this live stream. Um, click and, and register, because that is where you're gonna be able to bid on our live auction items in a little bit, um, and also where you can make a donation, as Mike was just saying, or call us, 206-328-328. 2200, the team is ready to answer the phone. You know, we would love to talk with you. And tonight we are gonna get to meet a few of the artists who so generously donated to our live auction. Uh, just remember, all live auction items are open and bids are already being accepted, but we wanted you to have a little chance to meet some of these artists. So first up is the amazing Juan Alonso Rodriguez, and we get to check in with his item number 12. Let's take a sneak peek into Juan's studio right now. I think that artists help other people see the world in a slightly different way. We, we portray what we see, we portray what we imagine, and I think we always kind of mark time in some way. We're gonna look back at the, at the artwork being made right now and we're gonna, yes, we're gonna see that artwork that relates to the pandemic. And then we're gonna see, I think, a lot of people that are gonna be doing something completely different, maybe different than what they were doing before. Hi, I'm Juan Alonso Rodriguez. We're in my studio, Juan Alonso Studio in Pioneer Square. Um, this is where I come every day to work. I've, I've talked to a lot of people, especially um, younger artists or artists that are new to Seattle, and one of the first places that I tell them to go is Pratt. First of all, it feels, it feels very much like community. And the thing is, you, you're curious about learning a new craft, learning a new medium. Um, so that's the first place that I would send anyone to go to because, the, I mean, it just the variety of things that you can learn there, and just the camaraderie with the instructors and the students there. Everybody knows everyone, and there's really this urge to, to want to help and to, to create more of that community. So to me, um, that's the way that I want to teach, and it's also that's the way that I want to learn. When this whole pandemic started, I had just come back from a trip. I, I landed back in Seattle um, March 14th, and I thought, how, how am I going to handle this? And how long are we going to have to deal with this? So I sort of tricked myself into believing that I was going into an art residency. 
which is, you know, which is I love doing. I, I love going to, to a place and just not having the distractions that I have at home. So I thought maybe if I think of it as an art residency for as long as, for as long as this takes. And so that really helped me. And I, I know it's, it's kind of fooling yourself, but um, just to think about, about just coming to the studio making work every day without any kind of show in mind, without any kind of product, end product. It was just, I'm gonna go every day to the studio and make something. And it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, I'm just gonna make it and see where it goes. I think by making art has helped me understand, not just understand myself better, but understand other people. If, if there's anything, you know, that I would say is a soul of a person, I think when I'm making art is when I feel that the most. I think Pratt is gonna be a little bit of a magnet to, to a lot of people that have been craving um, experimentation and craving learning something completely new. But I think that um, there's a potential not just to encourage people to take new classes or anything like that, but just this, like I, I, I want, <laughs> I want to have a big party at Pratt. You know, I want, I want to see a lot of my artist friends there. I, you know, I, I want to see that gathering. I want to, you know, even if, even if some of us are still wearing masks, I want to see that in-person camaraderie that I think we all have been missing. <laughs> Thank you, thank you so much, Juan, um, and for, for sharing and for your incredible donation. So just to remind you, Juan's piece is item number 12, which is part of our second round of live auction items. And, um, and, and, and again, the items will close in three rounds. Item, uh, the, the items in the first round are one through six. The second round over here are seven through 12. And then the third and final round will be 13, 14, 15, and 16. And, and I just wanted to ask anyone in the chat right now, um, uh, if, if, if you need any like um, closer looks, like do you need to see any of these pieces a little bit more closely? I mean, and, and I can see that Gabriel Bello Diaz is right in our chat and the piece item number one is a collaborative piece um, from Fumi and Gabriel um, um, from Gab uh, and we're so, so um, grateful to both of you. So if you need to see something like more closely, we can do that for you. The Kim McIntyre's piece, um, she collaborated with um, Paul Jasper and and the, the woodwork in here is like truly, truly amazing. So if you want to tell us, oh, and Juan Alonso Rodriguez is also in the chat with us right now. Juan, thank you again. Does anybody need any, um, any closer looks on items? Because I know I can see that people are definitely bidding on all of these pieces. So uh, if, if you want, um, we can help you. We just, you know, we, we want to help you so you can know where to put something. So let us know if we can, and we will try to get you a closer look. Um, I know. And also, I want to tell you about something in Max Giving that will help you be the successful bidder. This is like insider information right now. There is a bid more feature where you can set a max bid. And this is how you make the robots do your bidding for you. When other people come to take your art away, the robots will make sure that it stays with you where it belongs. So just tell them what the amount you are maximum willing to bid, and then they will bid for you against other people. I know, right, Olivia? The tee box is incredible. So set a max bid, and then the item will be yours. Now, while you're doing that, Pratt has such a long and incredible commitment to youth programming. And we're really excited because we have two young artists who are here making incredible art in our youth space this evening. And Hillary is making her way. I think she's already there. So let's go with Hillary over and meet these two incredible young artists. Uh, take us over there, Hillary. We'd love to see it. Hello. Hi. Oh my God, hello. I made it to the youth studio with our amazing youth. This is amazing. Um, 
So, Lucia, how's it going? Good. good. Phoenix, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How cool, are you? cool. Well, for those of you at home who don't know who these amazing youth artists are, I'd like to introduce them and then they're going to tell a little bit about themselves, okay? So, Lucia, why don't you go first? Tell everyone about who you are, what you do. Hi, I'm Lucia Santos. I am an 18 year old artist and writer from Seattle, Washington, and I am here today at Pratt to do some block printing. I haven't done block printing in a while, so it was really nice today to come in and get to use a, a medium that, you know, is good, good and, like, special to me. Um, That's amazing. Good. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk more about your process and yeah. what inspires you. And, you know, like, Phoenix, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Which camera I'm looking at? You're going to look right over there, sweetie. Um, hi, my name is Phoenix. I go to Nova Alternative High School, and I'm a junior. And I'm working on a painting, but I'm going to add, like, other things. Possibly, like, Sharpie and, like, pillow stuffing to, like, add to the birthday cake. You're making a birthday cake? Yeah. Um, this wow. piece is just, like, about, like, growing up too early. And, like, just this girl's, like, birthday is, like, ruined because of it. Wow. That's a lot. I can't wait to see you come up, what you come up with. So that's so much good stuff. So, yeah, so let's talk about what we're making here in the studio today. I know that both of you are brilliant, talented artists, and, you know, we just love the vibe that you're giving. So, um, Lucia, what are you making right now? What are you carving into this uh, lino cut or easy cut? This is a little, um, <laughs> a little stamp I'm making that is kind of featuring elements of the Filipino flag. What's up? Some like waves and stuff and today I've been doing just kind of like yeah making a bunch of stamps. This one is kind of a more like on its own thing and then this is a stamp that I'm going to be putting on parts of Phoenix's painting as kind of a collaborative Ooh, piece. I like that. I did some like mock-ups of it here. Also some mock-ups of this. I didn't really, I was trying to do like something with like multiple different colors, but mm -hmm. it was kind of hard. I couldn't really figure out how to get multiple colors. So I kind of, I like taped together the stencil and tried to like. Well, it's all about experimenting, exactly. right? They, you know? I'm not, I'm not unhappy with it. I think it looks Excellent. cool. The negative space really adds to it, yeah, in my like opinion. There's some, like, some little splashes. Cool. And um, so you're inspired by uh, your Filipino heritage, yeah. right? And yeah. some florals and different yeah. abstract shapes. And, like, what other kinds of things inspire you as an artist? Well, I definitely, personally, primarily do painting. Like, mm -hmm. I identify more as a painter. I also like writing, and a lot of what inspires me is just kind of, like, what's around me, and, like, especially in this season during springtime, I'm always, like, outside and trying to be in nature and be inspired by, you know, other people outside enjoying their lives, and especially during the pandemic, like, it's been interesting to see how my art has changed without as much external um, inspiration so mm -hmm. I've been looking more like inside and definitely doing a lot of spirals and trying to kind of yeah stop overthinking art yeah just, just processing it all right and just kind of seeing where that takes you that's just part of the process that's awesome and and Phoenix tell me a little bit about what inspires you and kind of the types of artwork that you like to explore as an artist um, I do all kinds of art but um one thing that really drives my art would definitely be like just like how it was like growing up and like this is kind of my way of processing everything that's happened especially with like therapy like, mm -hmm. I feel like art can be therapy art is so therapy for me yeah. I mean it's it got me through the pandemic thus far so I get it yeah and like music I'm getting into that a little bit I'm but, a music um, musician <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, music and, like, art in general has always, like, made me really happy and, like, brought me joy. So I'm hoping I can do that to other people or, like, give them some kind of comfort. So, 
That's awesome. That's so beautiful. Oh my God, you guys are so talented. I love hearing about your story and what you guys are creating. I know this is kind of like more of a workshop, just kind of getting to know the space, getting to know a little bit more about Pratt, right? And I know that you guys are probably going to be taking a class here too, right? Yeah. Um, what classes are you probably interested in taking here at Pratt? Um, you have an answer. I'm not really sure yet. I'm going to look at the calendar and check it out. I'm hoping that I can do one that is going to meet in person some days. Like maybe jewelry making. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of good resources here. What about you? Um... I might do something that I've been working on on my own or something that I haven't done before, mm -hmm. like ceramics or, like, if something was, like, glass blowing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Just trying it out, right? Yeah, well, just, like, art in general. I know. I'm doing it's like with my hands. That's amazing. I love hearing that. I just, I mean, Pratt has so many great resources. Like, how do you even choose, right? So yeah. I know it's just kind of exploring what your own voice, your own medium, but it's just really nice to have a community resource here for you guys to kind of explore what's out there, right? Yeah. You know, I wish I had a Pratt in my life when I was a kid. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, your story and this journey and your creative process. I'm going to check back in with you guys to kind of see the progress you guys are making because everyone loves seeing like what you're making and what you're doing and all the cool materials that are available to you and like I want to make something right <laughs> all right well we're gonna um come check back in with you in a little bit okay awesome. okay all right well thank you so much and back to you Ian thank you so much Hillary and Lucia and Phoenix Thank you, thank you for for being here and for and creating art together. We're we're just it's so wonderful to have. As Mike, you were mentioning earlier, like artists of every um, level in their journey. You know, artists are always on a journey, and and here they are making it. It's it's just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing to see these uh, teens right here in our studios. And you know, this year has been a hard year for everybody, but especially for kids. I know, I know, because I. Uh, I have a kid, and uh, you know, we heard Lucia and Phoenix talk about talk about outlets. We heard them talking about um, opportunities to express themselves, to process things from the past, and that's that. Those sorts of outlets are exactly the types of experiences that Pratt offers. Uh, my own daughter has had some outlets of her own, and it's been making board games. And believe it or not but Pratt has its own board game making class this summer in the youth and teen program section. So perfect opportunity for, uh, for youth to engage in all different ways. And you know, Phoenix also mentioned growing up too early. And isn't that the truth for a lot of teens and youth right now? Let's give teens and youth a chance to create. Let's give them a chance to experience. And when you give a gift tonight, you are making that possible. You're making it possible to continue with this amazing programming. And Ian, I know that you believe in this too. Uh, I think you have a couple kids of your own. I do. I, I'm very fortunate to have two daughters. Um, and, and yeah, this has been, I mean, unprecedented seems like the just an un, inadequate word, but a, a very difficult time. And, and having children this year, I mean, has been such a gift as always, but also there have been, been, been challenges. And so doing art um, with, with young people is, like you said, it can be such an important part, or it is, not can be, it is such an important part. Um, so thank you all so much um, for, for continuing um, to help and to support because to help the, 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 the artists of tomorrow who are really the artists of today, those young people, um, we're so, so um, grateful. And yes, um, Terry, I want to tell you that I saw your question and we will, um, I will be more than happy to show you that amazing bowl with wings in just a moment. Um, but I also um, want to just remind all of you that you can help us 
by donating right now. And we are already doing, so many of you are helping. It's just really, really incredible. Um, yes, um, so thank you, thank you. And wait, do we get to thank these people right here? Oh yeah. Um, okay, wait, so the Wyman Youth Trust is helping us with $5,000. Thank you to the Wyman Youth Trust. We are so, so, so grateful um, for your support. Uh, you could do that too. If, if you wanted to give $5,000 to Pratt right now, well, that would be just fine. Um, and you can do it in a variety of ways. Through the, the software, you can call us, 206-328-220. And when Natalie picks up the phone, just say, hey, I want to donate $5,000. No problem. It'll be great. This sounds good, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? Uh, just like you were saying, Ian, you know, $5,000 is a great gift, but a gift of any amount, whatever feels meaningful to you, is meaningful to Pratt. And to that end, we have a fun challenge to announce right now. The next 10 gifts of any amount over $50, $50 or more, will get their gift matched. So once we get to 10 gifts, Ian. Okay, 10 more gifts. 10 gifts of $50 or more, we will unlock a $5,000 match uh, from Susan Smith in honor of her late father, Richard D. Smith. Thank you so much for that lovely gift, an amazing challenge opportunity. Don't wait. Don't wait. We just need 10 gifts right now in order to unlock that $5,000 challenge. 10 gifts of $50 or more. Which is such a great opportunity. I love that challenge because your support at whatever amount is right for you, $50 or more, will help Susan in honor of her father to, to um, donate to Pratt. And so please consider doing that. And while you are, um, I, I want to just um, check in because so much art is happening and Shruti has continued to work on her piece right over here. So if you will just step with me this way, Shruti, can I interrupt again? Sure. Hi, how are you again? <laughs> Good. Do, do you mind if I ask, um, what's your connection with Pratt? How, how long have you known about Pratt or worked at Pratt? Or yeah, what, what's your yeah. Pratt story? I think I've been teaching with Pratt for three years now. Oh, oh wow. So this is the first institute I started teaching after moving to Seattle. Wonderful. So you, you came to, to, to Seattle and you started teaching. What, what do you teach, can I ask? Yeah, I am teaching, currently I'm teaching watercolor, acrylic, um, still life, and urban sketching. Oh my goodness, you do a lot of different things. Yes. So when you do. sketch, do you, do you use pencil or charcoal or what, what do you like to use oh. to sketch? Are you talking about urban sketching? Yeah, urban sketching, yeah. What? Yeah, pencil and pen. Pencil and pen. And, and watercolor. Oh, oh I, you, and you mix those things? Yes. But tonight you're doing, is, am I right, this is an acrylic? Yes, this is an acrylic. And, and again, I, because I can't quite see, but I'm going to, do you mind just telling us a little bit about um, what, what you're doing and, and your process? Yeah, um, so I have a still life set up there, like all the objects you're seeing in the painting, uh, they're also set up right in front of me. Um, so I'm just looking and trying to translate the things that I'm saying. So it's no, more trying like is a, not the right word. You are succeeding extremely well. That's um, truly incredible. Uh, wow. So you're going to keep working on this. Um, can, yeah. Do you mind telling me, like, I mean, this looks like obviously far better than anything I would come up with. But for like, what's the next step? Is there? Well, I'm. I'm happy with how far I uh, came up with this one uh, tonight. Like I have all the color relationships going and kind of, uh, hopefully I'll be able to do the first pass of all the uh, like uh, color blocking of the uh, pieces. So that relationship is the first establishment uh, for anything I paint, like the relationship of colors and shapes. So um, after that, I will just uh, try to refine each shape and uh, continue working through that. I see. So, well, the, the colors are looking quite lovely. And um, please continue, because I'm so excited to see how it, how it continues to develop. Um, and we'll check back in with you in a few more minutes, if, okay. if that's OK. Yeah. Thank you. We're so excited that you're here. I didn't, I didn't realize you were also a teacher at Pratt. So we're, just, we're surrounded by so many um, amazing, amazing people. And speaking of teachers, we now get to meet uh, some more um, Pratt staff, two local artists who are doing 3D printing to create molds that are then used to cast glass. And you can bid on this piece in our live auction. It's item number one. And they also were so generous as to offer a silent auction item. So Gabriel Bello Diaz 
is the youth and teen program manager here at Pratt. And Fumi Amano is, um, Amano, I'm gonna say it better, uh, is our glass studio manager. Um, so please, let's check out what they're doing together. So I've been at Pratt since uh, January of last year, so a little bit over a year I've been here. And kind of me taking on this role, I just saw a lot of potential in sort of my background in architecture and engineering and working with public school around STEM and project-based learning. And so um, as we moved like kind of into further into my job, I definitely started seeking out opportunities to collaborate with public school educators um, and education programs that are focused on STEM and project-based learning. And so I kind of wanted to bring that perspective into Pratt when it came to our programming of really allowing kids uh, to explore fine arts in a couple of different ways. Um, obviously the traditional way of just learning the skill, but also figuring out how they can integrate that into their public school education. And I've worked with 3D printers for over a decade now, and I really saw the potential of using this uh, sort of printing process with, with fine arts. And so I immediately started with the idea of collaborating with Fumi, who's one of our other studio managers, and really looking at how we can use 3D printing within the glass world. Gabriel talked to me about the 3D prints project. You know, Pratt has like a several 3D printing machine, but we haven't used it for any art classes. It's such a new technology and it's pretty popular in glass art world as well, but we haven't used it. So it'll be great we can use somehow for art making. So that's how we started this project. So in this process, I'm making a plaster mold. So this is the original 3D printing mold, and this is the final product. So I take the one of the original and I put on the sheet glass. So I make the, uh, the wall, and I'm gonna mix silica and plaster mix with water, and I pour it into the mold. So right now, we're just showcasing a couple of variety of projects that um, take you through and walk you through what the process is so that we can take this sort of content and show that to other schools so that they can immediately understand what the workflow could be um, and how they can kind of like collaborate and join in with um, working with Pratt Fine Arts Center. So different from the Cube project, we have another 3D prints mold like this. So for this one specifically, we have a more process to make the glass casting mold. So first I have to uh, make the silicone mold from the original. And with this silicone mold, we made a wax mold. So this one is uh, exactly the same as the original. Then making a plaster mold like this and take out the wax. Then we can put the glass in here and then put in a kiln to make a glass casting mold. My dream is to have Pratt, you know, have a space where it does become its own fab lab, right? And that's pretty much what we're doing right now with this space is, you know, just including the 3D printer and having the shot bot here. Um, there's a couple of other more tools that would qualify a fab lab, but the reason why that's one of my sort of goals and visions is because, you know, there's an academic network of fab labs around the world that are really into collaborating. And I definitely feel like that'll just be another expansion that possibly Pratt could go into. Um, but I think overall, just having just that other layer of new technology, 21st century skills within fine arts, I just think it's just a beautiful mashup. And you're just going to get so much more variety of innovation that can come out of Pratt with the collaboration of these instruments. Just a reminder that if you loved that process you just saw, it is item number one in our live auction. So make a bid right now. I mean, Mike, was, did I see you bidding during that process? Uh, it, it wasn't me, but there are plenty of people bidding on our items. It's amazing. And you know what? If you watched that video and you were inspired by the innovation, uh, by the expertise and the vision of our studio managers and staff, I mean, look at Fumi and Gabrielle and what they're doing. It's completely amazing, pushing the envelope of how we can cr uh, craft steam and art together and make something new within the Pratt community. Amazing. And you can empower that creativity for the community with a gift tonight. And we just love to see that sort of blend of of technology uh, with uh, something like, like casting glass, something that's been around for a very long time, along with 3D printing. Pretty amazing, Ian, and a lot of ways people to give can give tonight. 
Exactly. Blending technology. You're watching us on one device, but you can donate on another device and just blend your technologies all together. You could even call us at 206-328-2200 and make a donation of any amount. And I do want to just let you know that our silent auction will be closing Sunday at midnight. And Mike, you know, in, in the spirit of innovation and technology, we could invite more people to this party right now. Am I right about that? Yeah, it you're totally right. And yeah. you know what? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. You have gotten a great little taste of our programming for tonight. Now is the perfect time to send an invite. Maybe it's someone that you know in the Pratt community. Maybe it's your family or friends. You know what? You could just uh, fire up your phone, shoot them a quick message, uh, and tell them to come to this YouTube link. And when you do that, and the YouTube link is, will be in the chat here, and when you do that, you'll let them know that we are streaming until 8.30 tonight, so it's not too late for your friends and family to join in. Perfect opportunity for them to see what Pratt is all about. And I can see that people are coming and joining from all over. And the great thing about a virtual telethon event is that people can come from any part of the world that is internet connected. And so please invite them. Um, and, uh, and I know that Hillary actually had a chance to speak with um, a person who is on the other coast uh, just this past week with Tanya Crane, amazing jewelry artist. She's in Rhode Island, but let's watch um, Hillary visiting with Tanya uh, just recently. Check this out. Thank you so much for being here. This is Tanya Crane, jewelry artist extraordinaire. And, um, you know, like my partner in crime for many years at Pratt Fine Arts Center. We met, I want to say 15 years ago, but I think it's longer than that. We look great. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I know. And, um, you know, we're going to talk a lot about Tanya's work, but it's just been amazing to be your friend and to be a fan of your work and see you grow since we started at Pratt and then you've gotten your BFA and your MFA, you're teaching at these amazing places. I've seen you at all these different conferences and I just love that we're still friends. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about your work. Let's talk about, you know, like how your work has evolved through that progression of your career. Um, well, as you mentioned at Pratt, I was, I was just learning metal tipping. So I had already done beadwork prior to coming into the metals uh, field and I really wanted to kind of round out what I had already learned and at Pratt I was able to learn um, all kinds of metal smithing techniques. So tell me a little bit more about the type of work that you're creating today. Yeah so I think what a lot of jewelers do um, and ceramic artists too is you you start to make work and you realize very quickly that people want to buy it and so you kind of transition into this like i'm gonna make money i'm gonna make production work um, mm -hmm. so i did that for a while and then as i moved into the more um, theoretical work work with um that i was looking at critically i started making work um with a story behind it and i was exploring materials that i would pair with that work so for instance um, I made a piece I call Southwest Cravat, which was um, this kind of folded and darted fiber piece that had a, an enameled necklace that had the similar shapes that went all the way around the neck part. Um, and the work that I'm doing today um, is using a kind of African and Aboriginal aesthetic. So I'm using um, kind of repetitive patterns, black and white, um, although I'm kind of transitioning into a little bit of color. Um, yeah. And I'm making these big statement pieces that are kind of referencing um, hip hop bling and, but with an African aesthetic, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, remember Do the Right Thing, that Spike Lee yeah. movie. And, you know, he had the big um, African symbol that he would wear, the leather one that was really popular in the late 80s. I'm kind of thinking about all these symbols of, of identity for black mm -hmm. people. And I'm putting that into like a 2020 context. There, there needs to be some meaning behind the work that you do. So I really started to hone in on like really trying to find my identity and my identity in all different like meanings of that word. Like my, my artistic identity, yeah. um, my, my cultural identity, my um, community identity and what it means um, to be a black woman 
in every place that I moved to and live in. And I think even like, I wasn't even realizing back then what I was, how I was connecting and how I was making a difference in these young people's lives, being a person of color and probably the only like artists that they were interacting with that actually looked like them. Like to me, right. it, it, it was not, it didn't make an impact on me until honestly, till recently. Like I, I haven't really, even really thought about that since you just brought that up. I'm like, yeah, yeah that probably did make a difference because I actually mm -hmm. went into yeah. a community and they saw someone working in the arts yep. that they probably, you know, haven't had that type of connection or seen other like Asian Americans working in the arts too. Nope. I think what's kind of the common theme is that um, places like Penland, Pratt, Aramont, um, Haystack, they've all really have formed a lot of how I practice and how I teach um, and how I make work and how I consider um, the people in my community. Um, so, you know, we're, this is for Pratt and, you know, like our story started at Pratt, some of your story started at Pratt. And so, um, you know, like why Pratt? Why give to Pratt? Why is Pratt still so special today? Well, Pratt is a community art center. And I think that just those three words, a community, um, kind of sum it up. And I feel like uh, there's so many things uh, about a community art center that give to the community that are seen and unseen. And I feel like that's an incredibly important part of a community and art. You know, like you, art kind of dictates a lot of uh, like society's um, flow and society's uh, longings and society's, you know, not so good sides. And I think that, that through art, we can overcome a lot of that. And if you're involved in your community center, um, you're gonna be a part of something good. And so whether you're going to take, you know, a drawing class at Pratt or a jewelry class or a welding class, um, it's going to enrich you and it's going to enrich the community. So give to art, give to Pratt, give them all the money. All the money. <laughs> give them all the money. <laughs> we love Pratt. I know. Like if it's not for Pratt, we wouldn't have ever met. And I love you so much. My life would be too. so sad without you in it. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you, Hillary. I have great news because Tanya donated some of her jewelry to tonight's live auction. Item number 10 is a piece from Tanya. Check them out. And what an amazing story. I mean, Mike, can you, uh, isn't it wonderful to have people like, like Tanya in our community? Yeah, it's amazing. And you know what? One of Pratt's, the, the very bones of what Pratt does is nurturing artists from their lifetime, uh, from beginners to masters. We provide meaningful opportunities to engage with our art community. You heard it straight from Tanya. You heard Tanya's story. And if this inspires you, if you would like to keep providing those opportunities to engage with the art community over an artist's lifetime, give to Pratt right now, Ian. That, that's exactly right. Give right now. Um, you can do it in our, in our software, on our, on, our, on our phone number. You can call us at this phone number right here. It's right below, Mike. You can see. Um, so please do those things. And with so much art all around this evening, um, we are so excited. It feels almost like those good old days at Pratt, you know, doesn't it? Like where, um, where things are just happening all over. And Steve, I know we have to come back and visit with you down in the hot shop. So, hey, Steve, tell us what's happening down there in the hot shop. All right, we are making some progress here. Hey, everyone, welcome back. You can see the salmon is taking shape. Yeah. How are we looking, Dan? We're rolling. We got uh, we got half a salmon anyway. We'll turn around and cook the other half. Not too <laughs> hot, not too slow. So we got a, a bubble that forms the main body and then we have a solid piece as the head? Yeah. Again, so the head is uh, stall blue or uh, steel blue. That kind of makes this a steel head. So uh, this is a part of the Chino or the salmon series okay. that I've been working on. Nice. Yeah, looking pretty good so far, but you never count your chickens with glass. That's right, anything can happen. Anything could happen. So far, so good. So far, so good. We got 
got the stellar team. You do have a great Spoiled team Spoiled rotten here. with all these good guys. Alex over here, my main man on the microphone. Sayuri. Huh. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, no, take another one. Yep. Oh, actually, let me see. Come on back. There's something on this one side. Flip. Flip. So you know what? We're going to turn it around. Sorry. Get it hot again. We're going to turn it the other way. So, Dan, why salmon? Uh, you know, salmon, that's just... Uh, I, that's one of the latest areas of my work lately and uh, you know working on the reef net series and uh, you know kind of speaking about Coast Salish salmon fishing and uh, preservation methods of fully sustainably harvesting uh, these uh, limited resources you know and so salmon is a, a big part of the Lummi people and uh, the tradition of reef net fishing is how they've been fishing for millennia and so these kind of go these two series kind of go together the reef net the shwala or the salmon series, they really, uh, you kind of can't have, can't have one without the other. Right. And uh, I feel like we're kind of in the same boat too. Flip, cap, flip. I feel like no matter what people, uh, I mean, just in my lifetime, I've seen the decline of salmon, you know? And uh, I really want to bring that to the forefront, just how, uh, just hang on to that. Trent, you want to flash this? Um, you know, the tribe is working with aquaculture and trying to restore these uh, salmon spawning grounds in the rivers. Uh, it's, I'm just trying to bring, kind of trying to bring that in my work. Yeah. All right, let's cool it down. No big moves now. Me and my main man, Jack. I'm going to hop in over there, brother. Need more flash. So this is the part of the process, Steve, where uh, we break one bubble off of this pipe onto this pipe that Jack has. And it's uh, a great opportunity to screw this piece up. <laughs> but we're not going to do that in front of all you lovely people. So you have to re reverse position, essentially, to put the tail on? Yes. That's what we're doing? Yep. I believe. Yeah, I'm believing, baby. Feels so good to be back in here. I'll tell you what. Uh, so many, uh, so much sweat has been spilled in this here dojo. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, you got a show coming up too, right? Yeah, I do. I have a show opening July third at. Uh, thank you for the plug at the <laughs> Museum of Northwest Arts uh, in McConnor, Washington, otherwise known as Mona for short. Yeah, that opens July third and. Uh, in today's terms, that's like tomorrow. In the yeah, right. <laughs> Are you making a specific series, or is it? Yeah, a... there's going to be a lot of the reef net work and uh, a lot of the salmon people work. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, all so, right, everybody, better check out that show up, Mona, July third, and we're going to check in with Dan Friday here. Uh, all right, let's see check it the out. salmon getting finished. Whoa, so amazing. Um, and, and Mike, can you, isn't it great? I mean, it's, it's like, I can almost feel the heat. Like, I kind of can feel the heat. It's, just, it's, it's thrilling. It's actually, it's exciting. And, you know, one of the things that I think about when, I, when, I, when I'm watching Dan is how he's included young people in his process. Yeah. And when you think about that, it's a, it's a type of paying it forward. Uh, including incorporating young people in the process. Uh, Dan as a, a master artist. And you know what? You can pay it forward too. If you're at home and you're considering a gift, or perhaps you've already given, now is the perfect time to give. Think about a person whom you've met, or maybe someone you haven't met, that would love to contribute to Pratt right now, but can't. You can pay it forward for that person and make it possible for them and so many others to continue access to our studios and education. Ian, this is such a critical moment for Pratt as we uh, are, are looking to the future. And uh, in order to ensure that future, uh, donations uh, of all sizes are, are so powerful. Uh, 
uh, Ian. So powerful. And, and Cynthia, we agree with you that having the hot shot back up and running is just such a wonderful thing, right? We are so, so glad. And, and it is all of you um, helping to contribute in all of these ways. Remember, you can do it in your, your device through our website um, or the, through the, the app or call us at this number. It's 206-328-328. 2200. Um, we would be so, so grateful um, if any of those um, gifts could happen. And, and also, um, oh, there's a, I think there's some other amazing news, right, Mike? Yeah, that's absolutely right. In, 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 in. I have great news. Tell me, please. I want to know. They all want to know. Yes, we can add in a lovely gift from Richard and Barbara Wortley. $10,000. Thank you so much, Richard and Barbara Wortley. Let's hear it for the oh, Wortley. Yeah. Woo! Wardleys, thank you. Such amazing, like, ongoing donors, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. Forward. Paying it forward. Exactly. And, and so to celebrate, we want to celebrate you, Wardleys. We want to celebrate everyone. And we are so, so, we're just really excited um, that for the next 10 donors of $100 or more, our dear friends at Glass Eye have donated votives. These beautiful, beautiful votives, like you have a couple, right? Well, I, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, we got it. We got it. Different colors. Mm -hmm. And if you are one of the next 10 people to donate $100 or more right now um, to celebrate the Wortley's generosity and so many people's generosity, we are going to give you one of these beautiful um, glass eye votives. We know some people received one in your dinner delivery tonight, and we hope you're enjoying it. And our partners at Glass Eye have been such ongoing, committed supporters of Pratt when we were meeting in, in person, and now that we're meeting in this virtual way. So Glass Eye, we are so, so grateful. And our friends at Glass Eye Stu um, Studios sent us a little video, just a note, this video was filmed pre-COVID, but, but check it out. These are our dear friends. Thank you, Glass Eye. Thank you so much, Glass Eye. And I have moved back over to where our live auction items are because I want to tell you a little bit more about each of these amazing live auction items. And before I do, just a reminder that we have three groups of live auction items this evening. In the first group are items one through six. And I want to tell you about those very specifically for just a moment. So item number one is that incredible piece that we got to see a little bit of the process, that collaboration between Fumi and Gabriel, where they, where they use the 3D printer to then make those molds to then cast the glass. And what's really, really awesome is that Gabriel and Fumi are actually giving you not only 
the glass piece that they created, but also the 3D printed mold. So you'll get to have both of these and hopefully we can see, can you see these hopefully closely? Um, so that's item number one. Item number two, um, and I know many of you have been checking this out from Kim McIntyre. Kim is our wood shop manager and she built this amazing tea box. And she actually collaborated with Paul Jasper who worked on this lid, the underneath of the lid where you can see this amazing wood plaid. This is all of course done in various pieces of wood. And I do just wanna show you the top because the top is also incredibly beautiful. I, I don't know how Kim, I don't know how Kim does it really, but I mean, I'm really glad that she does. And it could be yours. That is item number two. Um, item number three is from the incredible KT Hancock. And it is this glass inside this faceted metal um, sculpture, both pieces, the glass actually blown into the metal sculpture that KT created first. And this is so emblematic of her work. I mean, it's just, I'm gonna just show you really quickly like, the underneath, like how incredible, you can see the glass um, coming through and um, the colors and, and there's these, um, these, uh, these lines of cane, it's just exquisite. Um, item number four here on the wall is from the truly incredible Deborah Lawrence. And uh, she recently came and taught a masterclass in collage. We're so grateful for um, all of her support. And you can see that it has the wonderful Margaret Mead quote, that never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And it, there's so, you know, I was talking with Steve earlier and he was saying that this piece is just, it's got such wonderful energy. It will, it will bring good feelings to wherever you put it. So bring this to your house and just bring home really wonderful feelings. Um, item number five, now, Terry, I know you were asking about this piece and it, it's, it's truly one of our very, very special pieces. So the late Dina um, Barzel uh, was uh, an amazing artist. She was shown at the, um, the Henry Art Gallery, at the Francine Cedars Gallery, uh, and actually one of her pieces was recently acquired by the Renwick at the Smithsonian. So this is your chance to purchase a piece of art from an artist who is who's in the Smithsonian. And, and I'm, I've been given permission to just show you a little bit. It's made of felt, it's fairly light, um, and it is just truly, truly beautiful from every angle. Um, it's, it's really lovely. And we really wanna thank uh, Dina's estate and family for contributing this to the Pratt Live Art auction. We're so, so grateful. Um, and then I do have to show you uh, just one final piece. Item number six. Oh, <laughs> it's right here. I know, you, you, nobody missed it. Um, David Chat created this whimsical, beautiful piece of jewelry. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, if you purchase this, I guarantee that you will be getting compliments and comments all the time. And David was telling us that doing the beadwork was an incredibly meditative process. So maybe this, um, this puppy can come to your house and bring you some meditative moments. Um, so, so please um, make bids on all of the items in our first round of live auction items. Remember that all of our live auction items are open including the pieces that have not yet been completed. So you can make a bid even on those pieces and we should go check on those pieces because um, Hillary is I believe over now again with Micah checking in on the amazing paddle that he's working on. Uh, that paddle uh, is gonna be item number 16. So let's go and find out what's happening in the wood shop. I can't wait to see. Hey, Micah, I don't want to like sneak up on you, but I'm checking in to see what you're doing and it already looks so amazing. Um, we're back, oh, at, we're the back at the Studio, Wood Studio, guys. guys, with Micah and I am just impressed beyond belief. This is so extra and amazing. I just love it. Um, so you've made a lot of progress on your paddle, which is awesome. Yeah. And now you're carving in some design work. Can you tell us a little bit more about kind of the design and um, what your concept is and kind of the, any meaning behind it? Sure. Um, well, this design is really kind of based on 
what we call a complex ovoid. And complex ovoids are kind of like an abbreviated version of a regular design. Mm -hmm. And so typically you have like three sections of a complex ovoid kind of all into one. And I could probably draw it faster than explaining it. But basically you have like the head and the eye, that's the main thing. And then you have like a piece that goes this way and a piece that goes this way. So this is influenced by the complex ovoid concept, but I've made it into the shape of a paddle. But it's a Thunderbird. And it's a Thunderbird with like this plumage on the top, a little bit sharper of a beak, and then your typical Thunderbird, but it's based on the Thunderbird. And then uh, we've got like the, the big wing piece and then the feathers coming down. Oh my God, it just sounds, it, it already looks amazing. And then since it's fit to a paddle, you know, I, I do a bit of abbreviation or, you know, variation of the design. So it's, you get into where it's not anatomically correct, but you see enough of the anatomy in the piece that it's, you can kind of feel it. You yeah. read the language, you get, you understand what it is. Yeah. Oh, that's so, so amazing. There's and a little bit of an abstract aspect to it, but then the, on the other hand, you know, there's a very definitive form line design to it. And I'm carving designs in here like, Typically, what would normally done like a carving in the plaque or carving in a um, like a house panel, mm -hmm. and so that technique we use in paddle sometimes for real special, you know, ornamental gifts. And then what I could do sometimes inlay some abalone pieces and whatnot, and then you get wow. really fancy with the pieces. Or it's just your basic, your paddling. It's a SUV version of the paddle. <laughs> Well, it's stunning. And so what tools are you using to carve out this design? Can you tell, them, tell a little bit more about the technique? Well, and... the detail knife, mm. um, you know, it's been said before that a lot of these knives were made out of, like, um, beaver teeth mm -hmm. and other things. And so a lot of detail cuts like this back a long time ago, there's a lot of detail work done like this made out of, um, made out of the um, beaver teeth. But after we got steel... We were able to get a lot crisper lines and a lot more efficient with, you know, our time and efforts. And so the art form really took off to a different level of detail for some of the traditions around the Northwest. Just... And for paddles, uh, the benefit of steel really uh, took the art form into a new direction. Is um the this is made of cedar, right? Yeah. Is it pretty easy to cut into? It looks like it's cutting like butter, but yeah. then you are an expert woodsmith, wood woodworker. Old, yeah. old growth red cedar is typically a lot softer than most wood. Mm hmm It's pliable, bendable, and splits really easy, uh, depending on you know how green and wet it is. But it's also really high in silica. So it does get abrasive to tools, even though it's really soft and cars relatively easy compared to hardwood. Wow, I'm like just so mesmerized. I can't even like ask any questions because I just want to watch you carve. So but yeah, yeah the, that's amazing. One of the things I tell people as well is you can concentrate on the shaving you're making because what's left behind is the kind of cut and shave that you want. But for people to realize and look at, you know, what you're doing to a piece of wood to make it different, there's another way of looking at it. Rather than scraping the wood with a knife, you look at what you make out of it, and then the quality of the cut and how it was removed, you know, will leave a, a quality surface behind. So a lot of people sand after carving, and some people don't, but typically when you do a lot of detail cuts, you're not going to sand every piece. Mm -hmm. And so you really want to have sharp knives. You want to have control and precision. And you want to be able to read the wood in a way where you can get a better quality of a shaving that comes out afterwards. Wow. I love it. It seems so meditative as well. Um, well, this was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I know um, we have one more visit a little bit later on to kind of check in and see your progress. So, okay. so yeah, thank you again for your time and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay. Cool. All right. You. Thank you, Micah. Awesome. Okay. Ian, back to you. Thank you so much, Hillary and Micah. Thank you. I mean, Mike, it, that, that idea that Micah just shared, that these, these little cuts, these small acts, that when, when they're all combined, 
they create something truly amazing, beautiful. It, it really reminds me of, well, of being here with you all tonight. I mean, all together. You, you, Mike, does that, does that ring for you as well? Yeah, absolutely, Ian. I mean, just my short time here at Pratt, I've been blown away by the passion, uh, the belief that our Pratt community has in everything that we're doing. And just like you said, Ian, just like uh, those little cuts that lead up to something big, something amazing, something that transcends the sum of its parts, so too do your contributions tonight, no matter the size, add up to something that's really incredible and makes our Pratt community possible. Uh, Ian, uh, lots of ways for people to give, including our auction tonight. Uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah, and I can tell you, Mike, that a lot of people have, uh, they, people are bidding on our live auction items, um, which is really wonderful. And I can see Terry and Catherine and um, Patrick, and I can see Cheryl, and I can see Nancy are all uh, currently top bidders on live auction items, which is fantastic. Um, our live auction is coming up very soon. So I wanna take a minute to tell you about our second group of live auction items, which as I mentioned before, includes items seven through 12. So item num number seven is actually right behind me. So I'm gonna step out of the way. This is the incredible, incredible pyrograph from Etsuko Ichikawa. And Etsuko, um, an incredible artist, but also Etsuko, I just want to remind people that you so graciously served as the auction chair last year when for the very first time we created a virtual Pratt Live and your ongoing commitment um, in, in donating your amazing art and, and also your time uh, is just so, so gratefully appreciated by Pratt. Thank you, Etsuko. And this is um, item number seven. So make sure, you know, Etsuko basically dances with fire and then creates these beautiful pieces. So that could be yours. Item number eight um, is on the other side of me. And this is from Catherine Eaton Skinner. This amazing encaustic um, Parisian tall tree. It is so beautiful. And I can tell you from up close, the texture in the tree I mean, it's remarkable. It, it is so evocative of tree bark and it's just a stunning piece. Uh, we, I highly recommend that you try to get a bid in on item number um, eight. Item number nine is right here and the amazing dynamic duo of Cappy Thompson and Dick Weiss. This um, artistic powerhouse uh, again has donated something so magical, each side representing uh, one of those two artists. And uh, it, you, Cappy and Dick, thank you for your ongoing support of, of Pratt. And this is item number nine. Um, so I'm not gonna touch it because hopefully you can see it. I know you can. Okay, item number 10. Uh, this is how you get basically all the attention because this is that, uh, these earrings from Tanya. Um, Tanya, thank you so much for being here in the chat. Um, I can see that Tanya is joining us uh, all the way from Rhode Island and, and for this beautiful, beautiful set. I mean, if you would either like to, um, to, get, to have a lot of attention or if, if you're not an earring person, I bet you know somebody who you might like to have their attention on you, simply buy these for them and then that could happen for you. Um, item number 11 is right over here. It is the Lee Campbell, um, it's actually three individual blocks of glass. And of course you can see the dress shirt uh, that, is, that is encapsulated or represented, not encapsulated, there's no actual dress shirt. And I will tell you that from behind, it's also really sort of, um, it's, it's, it's stunning. Uh, and you know, I know Mike and I were talking like, what an interesting year of work from home for many and Zoom meetings and whether or not you wear all the same clothes that you might have worn or dress shirt or not. I mean, it's, this, is, uh, this is item number 11. You can find out or make a bid right now. I highly encourage you. And then also uh, item number 12 is the piece from Juan Alonso Rodriguez. And I know that Juan told us he so appreciates how, how Pratt supports artists. And he donated this piece um, in, out of his support for Pratt. And he spent time in the desert drawing desert plants. And then those drawings became the genesis of these sculptural pieces. I mean, it's, it's really, really um, 
just one, thank you so much. Um, and I know you've been here with us this evening as well. Uh, so um, this is your opportunity to make a bid on any of these items. And Mike, uh, can you believe, I mean, I can tell you people are bidding. It's really, really great. It's pretty fun. Absolutely. So amazing. And you know what? There's yet another item that we still haven't yet showcased. And that is a diptych donation from Shruti Gatak. And I want to say thank you so much. Which also brings us to, uh, you know, I'd love to check in with Sruti right now. Would you like to join me? If you would, we can walk this way. Come on over here. And hi, Sruti. Hi. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, I'll tell you, like I mentioned at the top of the show, just hearing you work is like very comforting, calming. Is there any type of like feeling that you feel as you're creating? Or do you kind of just let them wash over you? How does it... How does that feel? Well, um, when I work from observation and just, you can see like I'm just staying here for hours and hours just with those objects. Mm -hmm. I feel like I kind of build a connection to them, like kind of a meditation, like you like, otherwise I don't see those objects for that long. Yeah. Like you're spending like so many hours, days and weeks with just those objects. And I, I feel like that's quite fascinating. And every time you see new things, a new relationship between all those things, um, I find it quite, that's really quite magical. beautiful. Yeah, anyway. thank you. Um, one thing I noticed, and, and for our, our viewers at home, um, when you watch the, the replay, when they watch the replay of this, they'll notice, I've noticed that um, the, the plant, for example, is, has been filled in a lot. Um, it would, there was less color on it, but now mm -hmm. there's a lot. Um, is, do, is there a, a flow or an order to which you, your, your move to paint um, your still paintings? Your still paintings? Well, um, I, I try to make connection with like all the sides and corners and like how we move from one place to other or one object to other and how they make connection within this like uh, this rectangle. Mm -hmm. So that's something I just and go back and forth between objects and make connection with colors, um, composition, and their internal relationship. Mm, thank you. I'll tell you, uh, and I don't know if you're getting this at home, but um, I'm just getting chills just listening to you talk about the process. It really feels very powerful, meaningful. So thank you. And tonight, you've donated um, not this piece, but a diptych. Uh, Item number 13, and uh, would you care to talk a little bit about that? And Yeah, those are um, drawings are, are on wood, which uh, generally you don't see drawings um, on wood. And uh, for quite a long time of my um, artistic practice, I worked on drawings mainly. Like uh, drawing, sometimes people feel like that's just the study thing, not like a a main stage, a center stage um, art practice. I, mean, I wanted to break that part, like being, uh, like bringing drawings to like main stage work. Those are actually um, from one of my solo so uh, displacements, where I did like uh, large scale drawing installations, like huge scale drawings, and uh, those are also part of like um, smaller drawings. Um, uh, so those two pieces are part of the smaller drawings that I did on wood. Thank you. And Thank you for your donation. Thanks for being here tonight and, and letting us have live look-ins to your process. It's really um, remarkable and amazing and, and meaningful. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it, as mentioned, if you'd like to bid on Sruti's um, donated piece tonight, the diptych, um, you can do so. It's item number 13. Uh, in the meantime, I think it's time to check in with Hillary and the youth artists and see what they're up to right now. Hillary. Knock, knock. Hello. Hi. Hey, guys. I'm back in the youth studio with Lucia and Phoenix. <laughs> OMGs, what are you guys making? You've made so much progress. God, I'm just so jealous. I want to make art with you guys. Yeah. This is awesome. Oh my God. So tell me what you guys have been doing. Well, we've been kind of just chipping away at our collaborative projects, which are over here. Ooh. And kind of your own things as well. I can show you those if you want. Uh, yes, please. Okay. I will bring you over. 
Phoenix, you can talk about them too if you want. <laughs> so these are just like little tests I was doing of my. Oh, I love the um, white ink on black paper. Yeah, I discovered the black paper today, and this is like they're both kind of like getting towards the same, towards the same idea, towards right. the same kind of thing. But this is kind of like a. This came after this one. This is like a little, you know, idea, like, tester thing. Mm -hmm. And then we moved on to this. Oh, uh, this nice. is not finished yet, but we're going to add a figure. Phoenix is working hard on the That's so details. cool. And we have the cake going on with the yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, tell me more about this? that. Yeah. I'll bring it over to you. I'm going to use, it was like, I'm going to use a spray paint. Uh -huh. So I took paint, and then I, like, just mashed it with the, um... Is this the birthday something? cake? Yeah. And that's the frosting? Yes. Oh, my God. Pretty cool. And I'm also going to use that for the hair as well. Yeah. Oh, my that's God. Sure. I love there's it like, so much. Uh, there's, like, different shades of the hair. Okay. Oh, uh, so, um, so that colored, like, fluffy stuff is going to be the hair. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be kind of, like, modeled after that first drawing. Yeah, we're just going to put that stuff on there. Oh, my God. I can't wait to see it. And the googly eyes just make everything so much more animated. And like eye contact, yes, I love it. Wow, and so tell me about your collaborative process. Like how did you guys like working together? Like how did you guys start the dialogue of creating this really amazing like birthday sketch with this kind of like, you know, backstory? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of just bounced off each other with like a similar theme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were asked to be part of the Pratt Youth Studio situation, and mm -hmm. both of us, we know each other through an organization called Young Women Empowered, Ooh. and we kind of already had that, like, creative background together, and we just, Phoenix sent me, like, some photos and some color mm -hmm, mm -hmm. boarding kind of theme type things, and I have a little background doing block printing, so I was like, let's just do, like patterns and play with shapes and see how it goes. I know. I think, like, the most challenging part is kind of getting started. Like, you have all these materials around you, which yes. I love how you guys have been experimenting with all these di different things that Pratt has to offer in the studio, and you just kind of went with it. Yeah. Um, cool. What's been kind of, like, the most exciting thing so far of, like, what you guys have been making? Honestly, for me, it's this. I really like this. Yeah. Stuff I, made. I, I love it's, it. I mean, I see a lot of repetitiveness. I'm and obsessed with it. Yeah. Good. I'm going to take it home, too, and try to keep working on it. But it looks doesn't look like much, but I really just think it's, you know, that was the first thing I did when I got here, and I feel like it's kind of withstood the test of time. Yeah, it's, well, it's intuitive to you, and that's yeah. what's important. That's awesome. How about you, Phoenix? Um, I'd probably say my favorite thing has been making the, like, cake stuff. Yes. It looks so cool. It was pretty messy on my, my hands, at least. So I didn't get it everywhere. How did you paint the the um, fuzz, the, the cotton batting? So I, like, I took a plate of paint. It's over there. Uh-huh. And I just, oh, I can just show Oh, yeah, please. Oops. Sorry, I'm making you get up again, but I'm, like, so good. curious. There's, like, paint over here. I, like, use different, like, shades. Oh. And I just, like, dipped it in. Because at first I just, like, swooped, but it was too much. And mm -hmm. then I just, like, kneaded in. Oh, you just got in there. Yeah. You just got in there. Oh, cool. It looks like cotton candy the more you're doing it. You're actually making it look really delicious, but I know I can't eat it. <laughs> but yeah. that's so cool. For some reason, the paint even smells kind of good. <laughs> Great. I, I'm really loving this whole process. I didn't even know you could color, like, cotton batting with um, paint like that. I didn't I, either. I just kind of guessed it would work. Yeah. I feel like it's pretty absorbent. That's so cool. I'm all like, yes. <laughs> That's so neat. Um, well, I'm really excited to see how, it, how much stuff you guys have come up with. Um, so, yeah, any, any, any other cool discoveries? Any other things you guys are wanting to try out? Do you think you guys might be able to finish this this <laughs> evening? Or you want more time? I, I think so. I feel like we're pretty close. We were definitely That's down to the wire, though. Like, <laughs> we were working on it. But I think I see you got your figure, and I think yeah. we're just going to glue it and 
see where it yeah. goes, right? Yeah. Who knows? You guys can always work on it later, right? But it, I, we might be back. I we can't wait. Back. I can't wait. The studio's I want to cool. collab with you guys next time, okay? Uh, yeah. Get some carving so, in. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Well, thanks so much for checking in, and we'll just check back again a little bit later on, okay? Yeah. Thanks okay. for sharing. Yeah. All right, back to you, Ian. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. Mike, can you believe? Isn't this wonderful? It is amazing. <laughs> you know, you look at Phoenix and Lucia, and, and they're just so incredible. It, representing our authentic selves is so critical to that art, pro art process. Think of all the artists we've seen tonight. Think of, think of Micah and Tanya and Leslie. Their art is built on that authenticity. And what a gift to give someone, the power to be their authentic selves, to put their authentic selves into the world through art. And what a gift to the world, your own authentic self. And you make this amazing transformation possible by giving to Pratt. And one example of people who believe deeply in that transformation are Jenny and Sabrina through their Pullman Knowles Scholarship. Thank you. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> yeah, woo! Uh, yes, yes, Pullman Knowles Scholarship. Yes, 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 yes. And I've got something great to share. Phoenix and Lucia are both receiving the Pullman Knowles Scholarship to take classes at Pratt this summer. Amazing, yes, yes. Thank you to Jenny and Sabrina, wow. Jenny and Sabrina donate to the Pullman Knowles Teen Scholarship every single year, a great example of donors directly making that difference. And you can too. Make authenticity possible. Continue with this gift giving. Ian, we've got a wonderful level at which people can give. Yes, you can give at every level, but $250 would be a specific underwriting of our youth program. If you can contribute $250 right now, we are really hoping that 20 people might do that to support our youth programs, just like Jenny and Sabrina have done so consistently. And I have such amazing news because, um, Mike, I would love to uh, show people where we are in our fundraising right now. Yes. If you check out, we are at $199,925. So if you are the first person to donate $250, you would be the person to take us over the $200,000 mark. And if 20 people could do it, well, then that would be $5,000 and we would be well over $200,000, which would be so, so exciting. So even if you have already contributed this evening, consider a $250 donation to support our youth programs. That would be just, well, that would be like so live. It would be super live. It would be Pratt live. It would be That's Pratt how live it is. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. You know what, this, this amount, your giving, it makes such a huge difference, a huge impact, not just for Pratt, but for the lives of all the people that we touch, everyone in our art community. And we have so many people to thank for this generosity. Uh, we'd like to thank, uh, well, just take a look at this list. Uh, Esther Irvin, thank you. Ryan Davis, hey, what's up? Der Dr. Eric Bennett, thank you for your $1,000 donation. Sarah Slayer, nice to see you. $100 donation. Donna, thank you so much. Ashraf, I see you, dude. Richard and Barbara Wortley, we have already celebrated that wonderful gift, $10,000. Jason McKay, thank you so much for your $250 gift. Sandy Glass for the $100 donation. Austin Kravick uh, for a $500 donation. Cheryl and Ron Berenson for a $1,000 donation. Manya and Gary Drobnak, thank you so much for $500. Pete and Karen, thank you for your $100 gift. And uh, Karina Senwat, and the list goes on and on. Thank you so much. Look at that. We just... Made it, oh my goodness, we're at $210,000. Woo! Yeah! Unbelievable, <laughs> let's hear it. And you know what, we have so many uh, individuals to thank as well for their, their gifts, including Fletch Waller, thank you for your $10,000 donation. Whoa, yes! Yes. <laughs> yes, Susan and Lonnie Adelheit, thank you for your $15,000 donation. Woo! Thank you, thank you, Adelheit! Thank you, you are making all this possible. And we would like to give a special and warm thank you to Kathy Gerlich. Thank you so much for your loyal support of Pratt. We uh, give you so much gratitude. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for Kathy Gerlich as well. Oh, Kathy, thank you. Yes, thank you. And now, uh, Ian, we've got so much more fun stuff to see in the live auction, right? Uh, exactly, because, okay, it's Pratt Live. And, you know, one of my favorite parts, to be totally honest, is the live auction and it is time for our first round of live auction items. So this is the moment where you want to have your max giving right at your fingertips because in just a moment we are gonna sell items one through six. All of these incredible items from Fumi and Gabrielle and Kim and KT and Deborah and Dina and, um, and of course David. So if you would like 
one of these items, one through six, they are all going to close simultaneously in just over two minutes, which means you have to make your top bids right now. Remember, if you use that max bid, well, then the robots will bid against other people who are trying to outbid you. So you have two minutes to go in our first round of live auction items. And Terry Hiroshima is currently the lead bidder on that first live auction item from Fumi and Gabriel. And it looks like Catherine Crockett wants to get in on item number two, this beautiful box. And it looks like, Patrick, you're in the lead on item number three. Nicely, nicely done. Nancy and Roger McPherson. Pearson. Well, it says Nancy, but Roger, I'm assuming, is part of this uh, operation as well. Nancy and Roger are currently in the lead on item number four. Item number five, this incredible piece from Dina is going to an anonymous bidder. Okay, you can be anonymous. That's fine. And Ashraf, you are in the lead on item number six. You only have a minute and 45 seconds to go. If you want to make a bid on items one through six, now is the moment. It's a live auction. So your thumbs should be dancing with Max Giving right now if you would like to be the person who takes home a beautiful piece of art. Terry, you're doing great. Catherine, you're in the lead. Nicely done. Patrick, nicely done. Nancy, you're sitting pretty. Anonymous bidder, you're doing very, very well. Ashraf, okay, you're in good shape. You have about a minute and 30 seconds to go. Remember, now is definitely not the time to walk away and decide you need another glass of coffee unless that glass of coffee is going to help your thumbs move more quickly because you have a minute and 15 seconds right now. So Terry, nicely done. You are going to have not just one, but both of these two incredible pieces, the, 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 the glass and the 3D printed piece that is all part of it. Catherine, nicely done. Patrick, you're still going in great shape. Nancy and Roger, the, they're looking like they're, uh, they're very happy. They're just sitting there going, yes, please, we will take item number four. The anonymous bidder is still has this incredible piece from Dina. Remember, this is the artist who is currently in the Smithsonian and could be in your house at the same time. Whoa, Sandy just jumped in. Cheryl and Ron and Sandy are all, and Ashraf, I'm so sorry, you're no longer the top bidder on that item number six. So, if you would like to be the top bidder on the beautiful David Chat piece of jewelry, I would recommend making one more bid right now. You have 45 seconds to go. Uh, and it looks like Terry is still in good shape. Catherine, you're doing great. Patrick, Nancy, our anonymous bidder. Sandy, you're currently in the lead. Now you only have 30 seconds to go. I highly recommend that you make one final bid because this is Pratt Live, a live auction that is happening right now. You only have about 20 seconds to make your final bids. And so Terry, this is your chance to make an actually Chris McPherson I just want you to know that Terry is currently um, outbidding you, but you can make one more bid. And, and it looks like Catherine, you're doing great. Patrick, still in the lead on item number three. Item number four going to Nancy and Roger. Item number five going to our anonymous bidder. Sandy is still in the lead on number six. You have 20 seconds remaining. This is your final opportunity. Don't let somebody outbid you at the very last second. You only have 15 seconds to go. Make one final bid right now. Okay, Sandy, nicely done. Anonymous bidder, great. Nancy McPherson, Patrick Osga, Catherine Crockett, Terry Hiroshima, I'm going to count it down from 10. Here we go. Are you ready? Last bids right now. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. Make your final bids. 5, 4, 3. Last chance to push your thumbs. 2. I know I skipped one. 1, and so. Congratulations. Nicely, nicely done. Hillary. Oh, my God. What's all this? About. It's a live auction! What did I miss? Congratulations, everybody! <laughs> I'm just like running around and I hear you screaming and I had to come see what's going on. Oh my god! Well, you know, if you're in Pratt and you're so loud that you yeah. can be heard over yeah. like the hot like, shop. I was like across the street. Yeah. I know, it's probably because you're being maybe too loud, but um, <laughs> it's so nice to see you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, you're obviously doing so well because, like, Thanks. you're just making it look easy, like running around and talking to artists. My um, only exercise, I get. <laughs> I don't believe you. At all. <laughs> um, thank you, thank you so much. Good. Because, honestly, I feel like everyone is learning like more about art and um, and kind of getting a sense of who the artists are that make. Yeah, it I love it. I just love being here and tying art, and of course, we're selling art. Lots to celebrate, guys. But I got more interviewing to do, so I will see you and you guys later. Okay, but you're going to printmaking next, right? I am. I okay, am. I'm going to go see Leslie. Okay, we're going to follow you in just one moment. Okay. Go visit Leslie. But, okay. you know, people sent in selfies. Oh. And so we want to show some of the incredible selfies, all of you who are joining us from all the amazing places. So check out a few of the selfies of yourself. Here I can't wait. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go. Mm
Um, okay, so I believe that Hillary has had a chance to make it all the way over to the printmaking shop where Leslie Nan Moon is still working. Um, so we're gonna follow her and see what's going on. Here she is. Hey, Leslie. Hey. Wow, you've gotten really far. This is amazing. Hey guys, I'm back in the print studio with Leslie doing amazing work. Uh, do you wanna show the audience a little bit of your progress? Sure. So. Um you know, as I told you, you know, you, I drew, did my drawing, and now what I did initially is I kind of blocked in the general outline, and now I'm going back in and putting the textures, because textures are what make a line of cut sing. I mean, that, it's all about the textures, so that's what I'm working on now. That's amazing, and, um, you know, I forgot to ask you earlier, but, like, are you teaching right now? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yes. tell me more because I was like, I really want to take a class with you. You can. Okay. So, um, I think I'm on about my fifth or sixth session of teaching. Okay. Cool. Times. And, uh, so I do online. We do, uh, four sessions, uh, four classes within each session. And we have an intro to block printing class. And then in a few weeks, we're going to offer our first intermediate class. And the intermediate one is where I'm going to teach the uh, uh, advanced techniques like the one I'm and doing today. all online. All online. And actually, what's been good for me is, well, you know, I, I have a profoundly autistic 20-year-old um, son, Trevor. So um, Trevor, uh, the older he's gotten, less and less services are mm -hmm. available to mm -hmm. him. So he's home so much with me. Oh, so online classes kind of work out for yeah, your great. schedule. Yes. That's amazing. So, um, You're making it work. So he's home. You know, I get to teach from home. Even I have an office hour midweek that I offer to the students. Um, uh, again, I'm from home, so it's great because I don't have to worry about finding childcare for him, which mm -hmm. is, is very difficult at this stage. But I also wanted to tell you about um, Trevor and Pratt because this year, Pratt um, with the online store, uh, Trevor being 20 years old, profoundly affected by autism, he doesn't have the ability to work in a traditional setting in the community. Got it. But he's very creative. Of course he is. So um, we decided a few years ago that as he was taking life skills classes, we would have his career be that of an artist. Because he that is That makes an artist. sense. That's, ama that's amazing. So um, what we do is we take some of his drawings that he does, and we burn screens here at Pratt, and then he helps make tote bags. Oh my so God, how these are cute. Some of his drawings that wow. we screen print onto tote bags. And I will say so the Pratt Holiday Store this year, the uh -huh. online, now he is a professional selling artist. <gasps> yes. That is amazing. Yes. It went really great. I and love that, you know, he's been able to connect with Pratt that way. And also, yes. like, you know, the online classes have supported, you know, your lifestyle and, you know, Trevor's artistic growth. That's so many yes. levels. I love that it's, story. It's really wonderful. And, and so that's, um, in addition also to Trevor, um, being able to go to the online store, there is wonderful um, programs here for special needs adults to do drawing. So I'm looking forward to, you know, once the pandemic is over, of course, all fully vaccinated to get him into those drawing classes. Because even though he's naturally creative, let's let's push it. Let's have him learn. Yeah, too, we all should learn. We should all we should all be taking classes and learning more. Yeah. What a wonderful story. Yeah. Well, that was such a great check in and such a Thank nice you. like um, intro to what you're doing and what's happening with you. Yeah. And so um, are we what's the next step with so this process? I'm gonna keep carving. OK, you're going to go back and party. <laughs> and um, when you come back, I will be ready to ink it up and print it. I can't wait. This is yeah. so exciting. Well, thank you again for your time. I can't wait to Absolutely. see what happens. Back to carving. Yeah. And back to Ian. Oh, thank you so much, um, Hillary. Leslie, thank you. And for sharing um, that story about your family. We were. We're so grateful and for the incredible, beautiful work that you're doing. I can't wait because my, my understanding is that that's going to be coming here into the live auction. We'll get to see it um, very soon. This is the moment where we are going to do our second round of live auction items. So items 7 through 12. If you would like one of these items, now is the time to be just very focused 
on our max giving bidding uh, software because we are gonna sell all of these in two minutes. And I can see that Bob Swain is currently in the lead on the Etsco piece, nicely done. And Peter Galtrano, very nicely done on Catherine Eaton Skinner's piece, beautiful. And uh, we have an anonymous bidder who is making a bid on the Dick and Cappy piece, uh, very nicely bid. And Mary Burnson, congratulations, you are currently gonna be having these beautiful earrings from Tanya, oh my goodness. And it looks like uh, Bob Swain is also the top bidder on the piece from Lee Campbell, which means that Bob is doing the tricky thing where he's bidding on two things at once. Remember that the robots are a very good way to keep yourself in the lead on multiple items at the same time. Set a max bid, and then they will bid for you against other people that are trying to take your bid. Like, oh no, Bob, you just got outbid by Anonymous on item on Etsco's piece. So Bob, you might want to set those robots up. They can help you. And it looks like uh, uh, Juan's piece is currently going uh, to Torsten. So here you have only about a minute and 45 to go. Make your final bids right now. And it looks like Anonymous is in the lead on item number six. Number seven is still going to Peter. Number eight, no, Bob just got back in on item number six. Bob Sway, nicely done, nicely bid. And now it looks like Peter, you're still in the lead on item number seven, nicely done. We have an anonymous bid on, our, on item number eight. Very, very good. Mary, the earrings are still sticking with you. Bob, you are still in good shape on Lee's piece and you only have about a minute and a half to go. And it looks like Torsten, you've got Juan's piece currently, this incredible piece all the way from the desert. Now is your chance to make a bid. You've got a minute and 15 seconds to go. Anonymous and Bob are going back and forth on that Etsuko Ichikawa piece. Etsuko, I mean, people are really looking for it. And Peter, you are sitting pretty with your bid on um, Catherine Eaton Skinner's piece. Nicely done. And it looks like uh, Anonymous, is it we? Anonymous, you are just bidding very, very well. If you're the same person, I am super impressed. And if you're multiple people, well, then that's good too. Mary, the earrings are still coming to you. You've got one minute to go. Bob Swain, sitting pretty with Lee Campbell's piece. Now is your opportunity to make one more bid on that item. And it looks like Torsten, you are doing very well with Juan's piece. You only have 45 seconds to go. This Pratt Live adventure has to continue because I'm watching the clock, which means, well, I mean, now I'm watching the clock because I just looked at it. It means we have to close this live auction in about 20 seconds. Make your final last best bids right now. Set your max bid because then at the very last second, it will make sure that you are still in the lead. We have 15 seconds to go. We've got Anonymous. We've got Peter. We've got Anonymous. We've got Mary. We've got Bob. We've got Torsten. Bob, if you want to make one more bid on Etsco's piece, now is your chance. You've got 10 seconds to go. Make your final bids right now. You've got nine. You've got eight. One last bid right now. You've got seven. You've got six. Anonymous and Peter and Anonymous and Mary and Bob is in the lead and Torsten. You've got five, four, three. Make one final bid. Two, one, and sold. Congratulations. <laughs> nicely, nicely done. Now, don't worry. There are still just a few live auction items yet to come. They will be coming, but if they're, if they're going to come, we have to find out what is happening down in the hot shop. So, Steve, would you please tell us what's going on with Dan Friday's piece? Because is it ready? Is it, is it coming this way? What's going on? We'd love to know. All right, everyone, we're back at a pivotal moment. Check this out. We are dipping the tail into molten glass. Yes. This is classic Dan Friday Open right here. Over. Keep it level. Flashing on edge. Job, young man. It's a fine looking fish there, Dan. Woo. Now we're cooking. Just come on back. Flip. Flip. Go 
on edge in there. Flush. And then when you come back to the bench on the flat. Can you find my straight shears, Alex? The other oh, there. Start swimming in there. <laughs> so, Dan, Alex, is this? You want to run the torch in a minute? Sorry, I'm going to have you get the bits. So, can you make sure there's four bit rods up? You show her three quarter inch or whatever. So the four, first two, fat, fresh cylinder. The second two, taper, a little colder, like a handle. Flat. Flip. Flip. Nice, dude. Uh, no, oh, sorry, not yet. Just get ready. Make sure there's four pipes up. I'll tell you when. We're getting close. Sorry, sorry. My problem. My fault. Flip. Nice. Look at that. Some action. It's got fish like motion to it. Why am I even touching it? Flip. Wow, I cannot wait to see what's gonna happen, but let's send it over to Leslie, who is back in the printmaking studio. Uh, uh, and, and Hillary, can you tell us what's, what's happening with Leslie in the printmaking studio? Hey, Leslie. Wow. I've made some progress. A lot of progress. I'm so impressed that we're at the inking stage of yes. the printmaking process. Amazing. So since I last saw you, tell me the progress that you've made. Okay, so I finished carving. Uh huh. That was the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like I showed in the example um, earlier tonight, um, I took this block and I cut it apart mm -hmm. in the two pieces. So now the bottom portion is already inked up and ready to go. Cool. Now I have the sky that I'm going to ink up in that rainbow roll. 
I love it. Want to see what happens? Yes, I'm okay. so excited. <laughs> Tell me more. So, um, so I'm, right now, I'm applying the ink. Mm -hmm. So that, again, is what relief block printing is, is you're putting ink on the surface of the block that you carved, and then you lay paper down on it. And at Pratt, you get to roll it through an amazing press. So um, at home, I have a little tiny baby press. Mm -hmm. But that's the other thing that's so amazing here at Pratt is you just you get to use top end equipment. Um, and if you take a class, everything's provided. But if you're a renter, you still get all the equipment. You just have to bring your own consumables, like your paper and your ink. Mm -hmm. So like all these tools here are provided by Pratt yes. too. Yeah, because they're, they're all, um, they're all, you know, you just clean them and they're nice. good to go for the next person. That's amazing. So yeah, so I'm just about done with the sky. Awesome. So you finish cutting into the linoleum, you cut it into two parts, and then you're putting ink on it, and you're going to reconnect it on the press. You got it. So now Man. I'm going to take each piece over How the exciting. Press. Wow. So cool. And, you know, the other thing about printmaking is even if I were to not do a great print with this one, if I didn't ink it up perfectly or something shifted. The wonderful thing about this method of printmaking is I just apply some more ink and another piece of paper. Ah, so, so, so that you can make an addition or like multiples. Exactly. How many do you normally print with a particular like block? This I would probably do 20, 25 of. Okay. Yeah. That sounds fun. And you know, sometimes I'll even do it in different color skies. So that's Ooh. just considered a variable addition. And that's why you cut it in those two parts. That's Got so it. cool. Once I've done the carving, I have the block. And I can mm -hmm. keep playing with that block and do different things. Ooh, so now you're rolling it through yep. like a pasta maker. Beautiful. This yeah. is amazing. It's beautiful. It is so cool to see so many resources here that are available and accessible to anyone who wants to take a class in rent. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is the community here. So when you do have, like, open studio days with other printmakers just to be able to be in that printmaking community is huge. Oh my God, here we go, Leslie. Okay. I'm so excited. I hope you guys are excited because I'm really excited. Oh, wow. There's the reveal. I don't know what's more pretty, the plate or the print. It's so beautiful. And look, it matches you. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think we're on the same wavelength. Like we got the memo, blues in, yeah. right? So that is beautiful. Again, just a tiny it. tree. Yeah. Oh. That is and, gorgeous. You know, it's an imaginary valley, you know, and a version of our beautiful well, mountains around here. We're always inspired by nature around here. This is amazing. Thank you so much for oh, sharing this experience. Thank you for donating your time to Pratt and for teaching and just being an amazing community member, sharing your story about your son and his art project. And his art journey was just really meaningful for me. Oh, okay. And I really can't wait to take a class with you. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, I, I'm loving teaching even online. As I didn't think I would say that a year ago, but it's been wonderful. Now I am looking forward to getting back in person as well, <laughs> but I kind of hope that some version of online stays because then people who can't get in yeah, can still take classes. There's a lot of flexibility. Well, I hope to see you on an online class soon. I can start making some cool prints like this. Yes, this is so awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again. This Absolutely. is amazing. All right, back to you, Ian. Thank you so much, um, Hillary and Leslie. Oh my gosh, so, so beautiful. And now that that piece is done, we are so grateful because Leslie is donating it to our live auction and it's gonna be item number 14. You can bid on it right now. The bidding is already open. And, and Mike, I mean, how incredible to have all these artists around and, you know, I, I have to say, like, I know you have only been part of this community for a relatively short period of time, but it sort of feels like You've been here forever. I mean, I don't know. Do you have, do you have that feeling? Like in the best possible way. Thank you. Thank you. You're just like, it's, it's been so fun to be here with you. Yeah. You know, it's been a real pleasure to start work here at Pratt Fine Arts Center. It just means so much. The passion from the community, as I've mentioned a couple times tonight. And you know, here's the thing that's most striking to me. When I come into this building, even though there's no one here, the potential that is electric. It's electrifying just being in the space and, and feeling what it could be, what it feels like when there's people here. Uh, and even, uh, we talked about that earlier today, Ian, about how it just feels amazing to be in this space. And I know that you are all looking forward to being in this space again. I mean, let's look at, just, just looking at Leslie, that was amazing. And 
we get to see some more people in the space again. Uh, isn't that right? Hillary should yeah, be ready? Hil yeah, Hillary. So I know that Hillary just literally left Leslie and went straight over to Micah because we have to see how we're wrapping up this evening. So we want to go back to the wood carving studio to find out what's going on with Micah. Um, Hillary, please take us. Hey, Micah, I'm back again. Oh my God, you've made so much progress. That is stunning. Um, Thank you. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I'm telling you it's amazing, so just believe me. <laughs> so, wow, this is just so incredible with how much detail that you've got into this piece. It's, it's just really stunning. Um, how are you feeling about it? I'm feeling really good. Nice. Interesting piece about the cedar, though, is like you never know how it stood or how the tree ended its life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a blowdown from the windstorm. And a big, huge, massive tree. Mm -hmm. So I found a stress fracture on this piece. And oh. sometimes the wood, you don't know until you get into it to see what happens. Mm -hmm. like what happens when, with the stress fracture? Do you carve around it or do you well, try to fix it? Well, sometimes you just got to work with it because it might be something that happened to the tree a long time ago. And then it's like locked in time inside the tree as it grows. Mm -hmm. And you don't see it until you get into it. Like there's phantom knots sometimes too. Like this piece right here. Each ring represents a, a, a growth ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so maybe when the tree was 100 years old, there was a branch on it that was maybe 20 years old. And then that branch broke off. Oh. And then it kept growing. And so, you know, 100 years later, somebody's carving a piece of wood. And then you get down into the deep, deeper parts of the wood, and there's a knot. We call it a phantom knot. Phantom knot. I'm learning so much from you. It's like I'm taking yeah. a class or something. So let's talk yeah. a little bit more about you being a teacher and what kind of things that you teach here at Pratt and what to expect if I was to take a class with you. Well, one thing you'd learn a lot about culture, and as a teacher, you'd learn about who I am, where I'm coming from, so you understand where the teaching's coming from, because that's a validation Absolutely. I have to say who my teacher was so that validates my teacher's teaching to me. And then I teach so people become a witness of what I've witnessed. That's beautiful. And so there's a traditional way of teaching that just happens naturally because that's how I learn and that's how I teach. So you get a bit of a cultural experience with me as well as some history. Because everything we do has a story behind it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much of a story hidden here that used to be here mm -hmm. but now we have such a broader community yeah we've got, we've got a lot of a lot to share with everybody else and do you um teach carving wood paddles or do you more do something more sculptural or is it I kind of more a introduction lot of carvings like i i've i've taught uh green bowl carving i actually helped a, a, another teacher who needed some backup i helped him with that and the green bowl carving's fun i like that what's a green bowl carving a green bowl is out of like green alder so it's it's like fresh, young green like freshly cut alder and alder grows so much it's it's really a sustainable piece of wood noted it, it grows like weeds mm-hmm and alder is kind of like the new hardwood for a lot of the woodworking cabinets. Oh, and so you can just carve a bowl so out of that? Carve a bowl, and it's also it's culinary grade. It's food grade wood. Like oh. this, it's got a lot of like a cedar oil can be toxic, and that's why it doesn't rot. Mm. And so it's good for like utilitarian uses where no bugs will get into it because there's the cedar oil is so fragrant, but it's mm -hmm. also um, doesn't let it rot or get bugs. So alder is one of those things where we use that for food, like for bowls. Oh. But my specialty is masks. Um, oh, like this one over here? Yeah. Portrait oh. masks would, would be a really good one. I think people would get a good uh, experience going through sort of the portrait mask process. I mm -hmm. think with a paddle, a paddle for a beginner would be a quick and easy way. Like to for me? Feel. Yeah, if you wanted to learn how to do a paddle. Really? Teach how to do one real I easy. could make a paddle? Yeah. Oh, I'm making a paddle. You make one I'm making a paddle, paddle, everybody, just FYI. <laughs> and then, you know, the paddles are a good start because you get a lot of, for people that might have patience issues with wood, because it takes a long time to get to see the progress. Uh -huh. So a paddle, you see a lot of progress right away. A mask, you kind of can see a lot of progress right away, but to actually get it to a real refined point, you have mm -hmm. all these other contours, so it takes more time to get to it. But with a paddle, you basically have one kind of a rounded edge on the face, you know, and then, mm -hmm. the, 
And so there's there's less contour to it, but then it gives you a blank slate for paint or for carving. Can you be like, like I have no woodworking experience. Like, could I learn how to make a paddle or should I take like an intro class before I like take with I think a, a, just a basic paddle class would be a good starting point. Really? Entry level paddles are one of the basic I mean, it's, ones. It's, it's, it's like so intimidating, yeah. but that sounds amazing. Yeah, anybody can do it because I think at one point you get you get to a point where anybody can do something to it. Ah, that's beautiful. And it's, so it's not too hard. So like for something like this, for instance, everybody can start with one of these and it's already pretty much there. I mean, you could use it if you wanted to <laughs> put a handle on it, but you could also turn it into something like this. And then you have, you know, a nice ornamental piece with history. And literally in about three sessions, you could have a finished piece. That's Thank you for, for breaking that down for me because I was like, I was like, I'm never going to be a master like you. But yeah. <laughs> that's really awesome. So I, I, I love that. Of it. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the paddles go with the canoes, and these are easier to make when they're small. But normally, your SUV size canoe back in the day was 20 foot. You've got your bigger 30 foot, 40 foot canoes. Have you made a canoe? Like, a, like an actual yeah, life size canoe? I've done a 20 foot dugout canoe and I'm going to do a 33 foot dugout canoe soon too in May. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. I'm just so impressed by your storytelling and your talents. And man, I just love spending time with you. Thank oh, you so thank much you. for sharing your story and your culture and you know what you bring to wood carving. You bring so much life and perspective and just, I love it. I love it all, ever, everything oh, about you. So you. thank you so much for sharing. And I hope to take your class soon because I'm I making so a paddle. Cool. This is awesome. All right, thanks so much. And back to you, Ian. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Micah. Um, I know that Micah is gonna keep working on that piece, but he was, um, he did know that it might be difficult to complete an entire paddle during Pratt Live. And so he donated a completed piece that is very, very similar to the one he's been working on. This amazing Thunderbird um, paddle uh, is gonna be in our live auction. It's item number 16. Um, and Micah, we are so, so grateful um, for your donation. So um, make sure you check this out, um, this Thunderbird paddle, because it's gonna be, uh, we're gonna bid on it in a second. But we have to go back to the hot shop because I think um, Dan's piece is like coming out of, uh, of the glory hole. Steve, what's going on? Tell us. All right, we're back. The salmon is really coming together. It's almost done now. We're just adding some mounting bits to the back. This is gonna be a wall mounted piece, by the way, if you didn't pick up on that. So you can have a salmon swimming on your wall, a Dan Friday original. Yep. What's left to do here, Dan? We're gonna put the final mounting bracket knob on the back. Uh, this piece will be sandblasted so you don't see any of that quick flash. So sandblasted will give it a- A like matte a, finish, like a matte finish on the whole body. Quick flash. All right, come on back. But the head will be shiny. And the head will be shiny, yes. The steel head is looking good. You can see that color coming through as the glass cools. Yeah, it's a citron green with a steel head. And just like all fish, it should be cooked hot. <laughs> hot and fast. Clip. 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 So, yeah, and so this knob will just have a steel bracket that goes in, and this will really secure. And this, uh, they look big, but they're uh, they're heavy duty insurance policy uh, for staying on the wall. Yeah. Flash. So the bracket will just hook right onto those. Yes. And there's two of them so that it doesn't turn at all. And because of the sand blessing, you won't even see them. You will not see them. Yeah. It will look like a fish is literally swimming through yeah, your Yeah, and it lights up really well on the wall. That's kind of... coming off the pipe, right? It's yeah, this is the, the part where we don't want to screw it up. We literally will put a drop of water on the hot glass of the pipe and break it off of this pipe. This is uh, another great opportunity for me to screw this piece up, which I'm not going to do, <laughs> but. 
super high stakes now. High stakes, yes. No pressure. A little pressure. A little pressure because of the cameras and all. Yeah. Well, if you don't risk it, you don't get the biscuit. That's true. That's what they say. torch it when it comes off a little bit, Alex. Clip. Side side. Underneath the rail. I'm going to go super low on this one. Flip. Flip, go come up now. No, 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 they're just right there. You're good, you're good. Go ahead, lift, take it, Alex. I got a pipe. All right. Swim, little fish, swim. Oceano. All right, that fish now is going to cool very slowly over time so it doesn't crack and Dan will finish it up later, but you can bid on it tonight. Uh, so talk to Ian about that. Back to you, Ian. Wow, yes, okay, item 15, the bidding is open. You can bid, do it. Um, Dan, amazing, uh, it's so, so cool. And we wanna check in uh, with the artist who is right over my left shoulder um, to see what she has been doing because um, amazing things have been happening. So come this way and, oh wow, Shruti. Um, <laughs> just, uh, I, I can remember you brought this in with just, you know, like things blocked out and now it almost looks like it's coming off the canvas. It's, uh, can you just talk to us a little bit about where you've gotten um, here? How well, are you feeling I, about it? Yeah, I, I'm feeling, feeling uh, pretty good about it. Like the relationships are done. And now um, I'll continue working on this and maybe we'll post an Instagram in Pratt. Oh, we would be so grateful, please do. Um, and, and again, like thank you for your donation um, of that beautiful diptych. And it's almost time we're gonna do our final round of live auction items. Um, so okay. thank you for being here at Pratt Live and for painting in this you know, it's pleasure. wild, wild place. We're so grateful, thank you. Um, okay, and we also have to check in with Hillary one more time because she's gonna go back to the youth room and see how Lucia and Phoenix are, are finishing up their project. Uh, so Hillary, show us what's happening over there in the youth space. Hello. Hi. I am so excited to check in on you guys. Oh. M G. It's like pink, pink, pink. I love pink. This is amazing. <gasps> oh my God, that's awesome. I'm like basically exploding with excitement because there's so much awesome creativity going on and so much progress has been made since I checked in with you last. This is so awesome. <laughs> Lucia, what are you making and how did you make that pink? And can you <laughs> just like paint it all over me? I just love it yeah, so much. This is another block print as I'm sure the audience is. Happy to hear. Cute, cute. <laughs> this is what I've been using for a while, and then I just made this. It's like Ooh. a little, little mythical creature action. Ooh, can you hold up your your print progress too? Yes. And Ooh. Then this is still. I love works, that. But I've uh, been kind of layering them and just seeing how they look together. And this is my new like go-to color of ink, which we love. Oh man, yeah. so are you planning on like kind of filling yeah, the whole page? I'm gonna use this stamp I was. Oh, using. right, <laughs> right. Get it. Cool. Get it, yeah. Um, well, awesome. And Phoenix, killing it. Let's talk about what's going on here. How much do I love everything about it? Well, that was the beginning idea. Mm hmm. 
yeah, this is pretty much an upgrade, and there's a lot of like 3D elements to it with the hair and the hot glue crown and the paper layering. But Lucy had like helped me with the background and then like put the swirly stamps on, but it's not too little anymore because it's like glittery mosh posh on it. And I don't know if it's because it wasn't dry or just because the chemicals or whatever, but I think it's going to turn out cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I like the layering and the experimenting and just, yeah. Right. It's just like trying things out. I just, I just love how you're just going for it and, you know, doing what feels right. How do you feel like it turned out? You like it? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I think the paper, I think it turned out better than I thought it would, honestly. Nice. Well, I'm really excited to see all of this progress. I know that it's more kind of an experimental space. Um, so, I mean, this is my last visit for the evening and I'm super excited to share this space with you. Can you tell a little bit more, like, how was your overall experience? Like, what do you think about a place like Pratt being a resource to youth like you? Because I wish I had a place like this when I was young. So I'd love to hear like more about your experiences. Yeah, this has been really fun, especially because like, there's so much, like this whole room is just for art. And it's kind of difficult to, like, store art stuff, let alone get it in your own house. Mm -hmm. So it's been nice to just use this space and mm -hmm. hang with Lucia. Yeah. So nice. I second that. It's definitely cool to feel like a working artist. And, like, I don't know. This is, like, a glimpse into the future maybe for both of us. Like, being in a space dedicated just to creating stuff and getting to work with other artists and getting to use awesome materials and like yeah would have never been able to pick up hot pink print making egg ever so <laughs> it's really dope to get to just yeah chill and spend the evening with you phoenix and yeah. make something together i know i'm like really excited to see the finished work and keep us posted on social and you know maybe one day i can work for you guys <laughs> I would, love, I would love to collaborate with you guys. This has been just such a wonderful learning experience for me and in just introducing your work to everybody has just been such a gift. So thank you for sharing your time and your talents. All right, thank you so much. And now back to you, Ian. Lucia, Phoenix, thank you, thank you. Can we have a huge virtual round of applause for our amazing young artists and, and a real round of applause here in the studio. Lucia, Phoenix, you are amazing. We are so, so grateful to all of the artists tonight. We are so grateful. And now I want to welcome back to the Fabrication Studio, the one and only, he's coming back from the hot shop. Would you give it up for our executive director, Steve Galatro? Steve, welcome, come. <laughs> this is yours, please. Thank you, thank you, Ian. I am back. It's such an exciting night. I, I had such a great time in the glass blowing studio. Um, and I caught the tail end of the youth project when I came back, and I agree with Hillary. OMG, I am impressed. I mean, <laughs> they are so talented and so thoughtful, and they're so generous with each other in their collaboration. If that is the future of Pratt right there, then I am excited. Seeing those two is such a great reminder of the transformative power of art and how it can make a difference for people of all ages. That's what we've been fighting for throughout the pandemic. It was never a question of Pratt's survival. It was a question about resilience. How can we adapt to deliver on our mission amid the most limiting of circumstances? I'm incredibly proud of how our team responded and how they continue to rise to meet unprecedented challenges. Our team, led by the fabulous director of programs, Eve Sanford, made a little video to show you more. Let's take a look. And uh, even though our physical campus is super important to us, we are not limited by our physical space. Um, that as creatives, naturally, we can pivot and bring our community more things than we ever thought we could possibly do bring them before. It was in our five-year mission to start moving to online classes. However, we had just okayed that five-year you know, plan right before the pandemic, so it caused us to move at a much quicker pace. So after we were closed for a while, um, we were thinking about what was next, and the first thing we really thought about was our youth programming. 
Um, we had canceled out all the adult classes, but what was coming up a, a months, a few months in ahead was our youth and teen summer program. Youth programming is something that has always been super important to me, and I didn't want to cancel that for the kids. They were already going through this pandemic and, you know, doing school from home, and we, we just, it didn't feel right to take that away. The youth and teen program was the first to dive into online learning, um, and really our goal was to not necessarily revamp our um, our program we just were really trying to figure out creative ways on how we can sort of uh, redefine our program for the at-home learning experience right and that was very kind of interesting to figure out because the love of the love that I've seen people have with Pratt is that in-person experience that one-on-one -on -one connection and so I really wanted to make sure that the students were still getting that even though they had to be at home I think that thing about kids working in their own homes is there was a comfort level that they were able to really dive into and it really affected how they made work. We've had a number of folks take a ton of classes like they just are like oh Pratt's teaching online classes I'm here and showing up for it but then when I've got to see them then bring family members into the same class from out of state or a godson or things of that sense that they can still feel closer to their own community by taking classes at Pratt. Thanks to Pratt, I've really been able to explore areas of artistic practice that I would not have been able to otherwise, especially in these times where I don't have as easy access to new materials, new studios to work in, and practicing artists who are teaching the classes at Pratt. Uh, during the regular times where you can go into the studio. The feeling it gives me is one of completion. Without having new projects, without being able to learn new things, I feel not empty, but I do feel as though there is something missing that helps complete what I want my life to look like. Um, I love seeing the resilience of our students and kind of like at first, you know, I'm just thinking of a specific class where at first, you know, all cameras were off, everyone was shy, and then by the end of that week, everyone had their cameras on, they were sharing their art, and just to kind of see like that, that sort of, you know, artistic commodity can still exist even though there's this sort of layer of being online, um, it was really great to see our kids still sort of thrive in that. I've even been able to connect a little closer with my godson who lives in Madison, Wisconsin. I signed him and myself up for a class that we could do together, and the following day he asked me to get online so that we could work more together. That's something that would not have happened without Pratt and the virtual classes that they offered this year. In this world right now, there's so much uncertainty, and I'm so grateful that there are places like Pratt where I, as an adult, can come and be my creative self, but also that I can connect with young people to help them do that. Pratt as an organization matters because creativity matters, art making matters. It is an integral part of who we are as human beings. Not only is it wonderful to create objects uh, that are beautiful, that you know, beautify our surroundings, our homes, and our spaces, but art changes who we are as individuals, it pushes political movements, it inspires our heart, it's healing. So Pratt as an organization matters because creativity is something that is just integral to who we are as, as human beings. It affects our spirit, it affects our lives. Um, it's just a beautiful part of, of being, being alive and expressing what it means to be human. I think of the world at the moment in the before times and the after times. And the fact that Pratt has continued to help sustain art making in this community reminds me that there will be a broader after time. It might not look exactly like the before time, but we will be able to get together again and create art collaboratively and have conversations and be in community. That's really powerful stuff right there. It's thanks to those people and to an incredible group of creators, educators, administrators, and supporters like you at home that Pratt has remained incredibly resilient. We've continued to deliver on our mission, serving nearly 1,000 students in online classes. 
connecting them to the art and artists safely and meaningfully from the safety of their homes. And now as we look ahead, the return to in-person activities and community gatherings is imminent. Pratt is preparing to reopen its studios with even greater clarity of purpose because we know that Pratt has a critical role to play in a community-wide recovery. The pandemic has taken its toll on all of us. We've all suffered in some way from the isolation of quarantine. We've missed our family, we've missed our friends, we've missed important milestones. We've lost jobs and even loved ones to this pandemic. There is a great healing on the horizon and Pratt intends to be there. At the intersection of art and community, Pratt can be the, artlet for, the outlet for social engagement, self-expression, and creative resilience that so many will need. Your support tonight provides the fuel that we need to propel forward, to be nimble, to be responsive, and to be caring as part of a collective rejuvenation. With that, I'm thrilled to share with you the news of a very special gift from someone in our community who believes in that, who believes wholeheartedly in Pratt's mission. And that's Cynthia Hibbert, dedicated board member and talented artist who has given a gift of $100,000. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That is an incredible gift. Cynthia, I know you're out there tonight. Thank you so much. We are uh, humbled by your, grad by your generosity, and we are so grateful. Uh, Mike, what do you think? Uh, unbelievable. Cynthia, thank you so much for your generosity. You know, let's take a look at our thermometer here, and uh, we are so close now. Take a look at this. <laughs> Yes, unbelievable. Let's hear it for, the, for our giving tonight. Unbelievable yeah. outpouring. Thank you. Thank you for your generous support this evening. And if you're considering a gift, if you haven't given yet, or if you are considering a second gift this evening, now is the time. Make our community what you want it to be. You have the power to ensure that Pratt is alive and thrives as we step into this next year. This is a critical moment for Pratt. You believe in all that Pratt offers, a community for artists of all levels, critical studio access, the tools to step into authenticity. Will you say that you stand with Pratt's mission and give now? Please consider a gift, maybe even a second gift tonight. Thank you so much. Ian, we still have one final round of auctions to go. Isn't that right? We have one final round of live auction items. Thank you, Mike and Steve. And these are the really exciting ones that we've gotten to see um, created throughout this evening. So. Item 13 is the amazing offering from Shruti, the diptych. Item 14 is the, the print that Leslie has been working on. It. Item 15, well, it's in the annealer. So we actually don't have Dan Friday's salmon right here because it's still like 900 degrees and it's cooling down. But item 15 is Dan Friday's salmon. And item 16 is the amazing Thunder Chief paddle from Micah. So um, if you would like to make a bid, on our four final live auction items, our final round of live auction items, this is your opportunity to make a bid right now on items 13, 14, 15, and 16. And we would love, love, love to have you all make a bid right now. So here we go. All right, are you ready? You have two minutes to go in this, our final round. And it looks like, oh, we have an anonymous bidder on Shruti's piece, nicely done. And D uh, Diane, you are the top bidder on the Leslie, um, on the, uh, the print. And Diana Friend, you are currently bidding on the fish that I can't show you right now that Dan was working on. Nicely done. And Jeff, you're doing very, very well on uh, the thunder on the paddle from Micah. So incredible. Nicely done. Okay, you only have about a minute and 30 seconds to go. This is going to be really fast. you got to bid really, really fast right now. Anonymous, you've got Shruti's piece. Nicely done. And Diane, you're doing very, very well on that um, on the print. I love it. Great, great job. And Diane, fr Diana, friend, you have Dan's piece. Well done. And Jeff, you're doing great. Okay, remember, this is your chance to make a final bid in this, our Pratt Live virtual telethon event. If you want to make one final bid, I highly encourage you to do it right now. And it looks like, okay, Anonymous is still in the lead on Shruti's Please, Nicely done. And now you only have about 45 seconds to go. Diane, Mary, nicely done. Diana, also. Jeff, you're doing great. You've got 30 seconds remaining. Make your final bids right now on these pieces that really they are part of our Pratt community in a unique way because we got to see all of them happen. Okay, so remember, Micah's incredible paddle, the Thunder Chief, Leslie Nan Moon's just stunning print the 
the um, diptych from Shruti and also Dan's piece. You only have 20 seconds to go. Make your final bids. Anonymous, you're doing great. Diane, you're doing great. Diana, you're doing great. Kim jumps in on the paddle. Nicely done. And now you only have 15 seconds remaining. Make one final bid in our live auction at this Pratt Live. We would be, we would be so grateful. You have 10 seconds. I know, it's almost 9 o'clock. Okay, here we go. And now you've got only 10 seconds to go. Anonymous is in the lead. Diane, Diana, Kim. And now you've got 9. You've got 8. You've got seven, make one final bid. You've got six, you've got five, you've got four, you've got three, two, one, and sold! Congratulations! Nicely, nicely bid. We are so, so grateful. Um, and is Hillary, I think, um, oh, right, so Steve, um, I know I'm gonna um, um, turn it back over to you because I hear that uh, you have one, you, something else you wanna tell us. Uh, Steve, please. Uh, yes, I, I do have something to tell you. I've been kind of dancing around it a little bit all night. So if you stayed up late to watch the end of the show, you're in for a real treat because I've got some news. Uh, I, I, first of all, I would thank everyone for their generous bidding. Uh, but I want to make an announcement right now. I'm thrilled to let everyone know at this time that Pratt will be open for studio access for independent artists starting on May 24th. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We'll be following all the necessary protocols and health safety guidelines and limiting occupancies and artists will be able to reserve in advance and pay online and you can read all about this in our protocols which is live on our website right now uh, and stay tuned for an email from uh, your studio managers for studio specific information coming directly from them. Reservations will open up in a couple of weeks. And glass blowers, if you're watching, I know, you know, you saw, I already turned on the furnace, so it's obviously hot, and you're, yes, you're going to get in a bit early, so look for an email from Fumi next week for details about how you can get in for a blow slot. This is such an important first step for Pratt in getting things back on track, and we are so incredibly excited to have artists back in the studio once again. Ian. Amazing. Okay, Steve, do you mind? Okay, yeah, I, I know we have to maintain our, our social distance. So if you, yes. If I'll you, hang out back here. Okay, you, you do that. I'll be here. Mike, this is perfect. Yeah. Okay, so um, I just want to say uh, that we are so, so grateful um, to all of you. And we want to check in on our thermometer one more time. As, as Steve just said, we are at $325,825. And if you could help us with any final gifts towards our goal of $375,000, we would be so, so grateful. Any gifts right now. Mike, is there any, um, any other news or people that you want to tell us about? There are some amazing gifts we have to thank. That includes... John Shirley, thank you for your $20,000 donation. John Shirley, thank you so much. Also, we have more. We also have the uh, Larry Benaroya Family Foundation $10,000 gift. Woo! Thank yes! you so much. Woo! Oh, and, wait, oh, wait. Am I correct in, in understanding that Ann and Ron Suter are donating $5,000? That's right. That's what Woo! I've got, too. Thank you. Thank you to Ann and Ron Suter. We're so grateful. Um, and th do you want to tell about this? Ellen Harbison for $1,000. Thank you so much. Ellen, thank, thank you. Thank you. Which means that we are at $360,000. We are only $360,825, less than $15,000 away from our goal of $375,000. And if anyone, whoa, we just got another donation of $1,000. Thank you so much. We are so, so grateful. We are at three, uh, 361000 If anybody wants to help us get over the finish line of three seventy five, dollars we would be so grateful. Now would be the time to call and say that you are giving a Bitcoin because they're worth about $50,000. That would put us way over the top. We would be so grateful for that. Um, please call us, email us. We, we would love it. Um, and Steve and Mike, it has been such a privilege and a pleasure yes. to help you uh, be part uh. of this community. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're, making, we're maintaining distance. Um, <laughs> Okay, so, um, oh, Hillary, Hillary, how are, okay, wait, here, um, you take that spot. No, hey, can we hear it for Hillary, our amazing correspondent? Thank you, thank you, Hillary, for your incredible work. And um, here, I'm just gonna take the, this yeah, corner. Do it, do okay, it, that works, it. yeah, I think that works, that's pretty good. Um, 
I want to say, if you purchased a live auction item this evening, please um, email, if you have any questions, Natalie. You can email her at nmiller at pratt.org, and she can help you um, understand how to get your piece. Uh, that is a, a great way. And, and if you have any other questions, Natalie is a great person to ask as well. Um, we want to just say, um, please and tell people about Pratt. Our silent auction closes um, tomorrow at midnight, and our thermometer is going to stay open as well. So if anybody, if you know anybody that wasn't here with us this evening and they might be able to come and make a contribution, I am sure we will get to that 375 mark. Um, we would be so grateful if you let them know. Also, follow us on social media uh, because we want to keep in touch with you. And we do want to, um, Mike. Yeah, I just want to say thank you once more to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you at home for giving tonight. It means so much. Uh, any gift, any meaningful gift to you is a meaningful gift to us. It's meant so much to participate as a community. Ian. Um, yes, yeah, so um, I also want to just say one more time to everyone who was here at Pratt to make this incredible evening happen. Um, all of the artists, Shruti, thank you so much for having me. Dan, thank you, and your whole team, thank you. Um, and we want to thank um, all of these incredible people here in this room, and, and particularly the behind the scenes staff, because it really, as you can imagine, it took a huge group of people, the Pratt staff and board, and our technical team here in the studio. Would you give all of them a huge round of applause? Um, and you, our donors, our donors, we're so grateful. Thank you, thank you. The stream is going to stay open for a few minutes so that you can hang out, say goodnight to each other. And we have a, oh, 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 selfies. We're also going to show you all the selfies. Yes, thank you so yeah. much. Um, that's going to be happening in just a moment. Um, but before we do, Ben Hicks created a time lapse of all of the live auction photography. So please stick around. Thank you all so very, very much. We will see you next year for Pratt Live of some kind. <laughs> of some kind. It'll be live. Have a wonderful <laughs> night. We will see you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Woo!